Welcome to season six of the Wilderness Living Challenge. Like every other season before this, we're gonna weigh ourselves at the beginning and then we're gonna weigh ourselves at the end. If we lose any weight whatsoever, we lose the challenge. Now, there's a bit of a twist on this challenge. It's not like every other survival competition out there. Reason being, we're actually trying to legitimately live long term off of wild foods. So this isn't just like collect whatever you want, use primitive tools. This is about modern man returning to nature to figure out whether we can still live on the things that are around us. Now, every season is a build up, a build on other seasons. And of course, this one's no different. So we're gonna be doing modern homesteading edition. So we're gonna be living out of the cabin in the woods and we're gonna be collecting foods that's all around here. And trust me, there's a lot of things that are in season right now. It's the fall and there's tons of things, tons of animals, tons of wild edibles around the cabin that we're gonna be pursuing. So without holding you guys up any further, let's jump right into the action. Well, good morning guys. It's day one of the Wilderness Living Challenge. I got Jeremy inside, he's getting changed. I slept out on the deck because uh, Jeremy snores a lot and also because I don't like it to be too hot at night. So I sleep actually better outside. Listen to all the nature sounds. I heard, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I heard a few deer running around. Last night we set raccoon traps, uh, five raccoon traps. So we're hoping we're eating some food this morning. Uh, maybe we'll double down and actually get a deer. So I've got the bow over here. It's all ready to go. I'll take you inside and show you what's going on. You all set there, Jerry? I am all set. I'm going to give you a light. Do you want a light? How's that? Is that oh, better? Wow. <laughs> so Jer life of luxury here. <laughs> so Jeremy got the loft all to himself last night. We have all our cooking stuff all ready to go. Jerry's got a slow cooker. He ate some uh, wild food. He's only eating wild food all year. Uh, so this might be his best shot of netting out this time. We have a few staple items. Um, I'm going to add this year, I'm going to add some maple syrup from the property. Jeremy's been eating wild rice and we have uh, some bear fat which I left outside and then of course we'll be using whatever spices I want and obviously I prefer my own brand. We have the apex generator going giving us power. Give me a look upstairs here. So this is what Jeremy's place looks like. <laughs> He's got crossbow air rifle and uh, we're gonna try for some squirrels. No, we're gonna try for a deer, but if not, we're gonna get some squirrels. So we've got some black walnuts we'll put out for squirrel enticers. And uh, if the squirrels happen to come by, we'll get those. But we're aiming for a deer this morning, so I'll meet you over in the stand. It's dark now, so there's not gonna be much to see until the light comes up. We're awake, <laughs> ready to go. Ready to go. All right. Well, no deer for us. Um, we did see a turkey out in the field here and we called it over to about 35 yards, but it didn't want to come in. Uh, they're pretty sketchy when you try to hunt them out of a tree stand. A um, bunch of red squirrels came in and then uh, Jared took uh, two shots at uh, black squirrels with his air rifle. And they both fell um, and then he saw them crawl away. So he's just out there looking now to see if he can't spot where they took off to. But uh, that's going to be it for us. We on the way in, we saw two of our live traps were empty. 
we've got five traps out so we've got three traps left i thought it was like a guarantee that we'd have them all filled up because there's so many raccoons here no squirrel no luck looked around a little bit here there didn't find any got a pretty big old puffball <laughs> but it's no good <laughs> it smells a little ronk a little rank ew <laughs> Most mushroomy, but not edible mushroomy. We can hunt crow. Uh, we can take off now and grab some apples. There's lots of wild apples around. And we can eat the walnuts too, but we have to dry them first. So I'll show you that later, probably. They got away on us. We're eating what? Uh, leftover Ra soup. Raccoon, maybe. <laughs> well, I hope so, yeah. Raccoon or uh, maybe we'll get something on the way back. You never know. Squirrel, rabbit, crows. Blue Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Red squirrel would have been an easy pickings this morning. Yeah. Yeah, they just were like shuttling back and forth all morning, right? Yeah. Bunch of them around. So here's one of our uh, baited traps. We threw, uh, what do we throw in there? Peanut butter and some bread and all that stuff. We had, tr had tons of raccoon activity through here on the trail camera. So I thought for sure, well, maybe they're just too full because they're eating corn right now. Lots of it. We'll just keep trying. We'll probably move this closer to the creek system and We'll see. Well, we'll see what's productive. We'll find one that's full, keep it there and put traps around it. It's been groups of five and six coming through all the time. Deer, turkeys, squirrel, 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 turkeys, turkey. I don't know what that is. Oh, turkey. These are all in the morning. Turkey, 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 squirrel. Oh, what was that? Coyote. That was this morning because it just came before us. Those are those Browning trail cameras. They sent me like six of them to test out and they do a really good job. This is an ASAC camel. If you guys want some ASAC camel, there's a discount code in the description. So use that. There's an apple. This isn't the best apple tree in the world. It's already lost most of its apples, but. It'll be the first meal of <laughs> Wilderness yeah. Living Challenge season six. First meal. Oh, love apples. Can't run away on us. No. Nope. <laughs> have to make some applesauce later. We'll find a better tree than this. There's lots of trees around. You followed me? Yeah. Filling my pockets. They're big pockets. I thought this one was a guaranteed spot. It's right in the swamp here. So it's right just on the edge. And there's a pretty good raccoon trail coming through here. Maybe they're just not compelled to go in the traps right now because they got so much feed in the, in the fields. Every season of the Wilderness Living Challenge starts off like this. Wow, except for the one we blew out of the water with uh, Zach. But uh, everybody found that one was boring. A lot of people said it was just like camping. <laughs> which it was because everything went well so we're 0 for 3 so far on the traps we got two more left one is the big big trap um, but I didn't hear it go off last night and I thought I would have considering I was outside and I do hear I heard some deer walking around I'm pretty sure bringing the 22 this time that'll, that'll be good luck you want to bring the crow call to you? the crow call? we're going to be out in the open a bit no, it'll just be here. Oh, yeah, they're just close. Yeah. We're gonna do crows. We gotta, you have to be 100% full camo. Ah, brutal. So this is the advanced trap. You can catch anything in this thing. It's got two, two doors, one at the front, one at the back. So if you wanna try to catch a big animal, it can think and go all the way through because you can see the exit. Here we got a peanut butter, marshmallows, and a bunch of bread. There's a mechanism over here which trips it once you hit those wires. Of course, we've got the trail camera on it too, so if we, anything happens, we'll see it. But this is through the marshy area here. And I was actually hoping we'd get a beaver as well, but I've been monitoring that and uh, haven't had any beaver activity since the dam was built, because I've broken it up and had a trail camera here for a little while. And, uh, but nothing's come through. So, here we are, <laughs> 0 for 4 on 
Raccoon. We got one more trap left. Oh for five. Oh for five. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah, you thought there was a good chance we might be five for five, but I guess they're just full too, too full of corn, maybe, eh? Could be. I guess we're eating apples and walnuts. We did some roadside foraging on the way here and got a pile of black walnuts. Um, we can eat these, but they have to be dried. So we have to dry that out completely and then we can crack it. It's actually probably fairly dry now. We'll put some on the, the stove once it gets going. We'll crack them open. I'll show you what they're all about. But uh, the squirrels love these full of proteins and fats. So I'm going to take a live trap and we could just use the live trap to trap it, but trap a squirrel. But my hunch is that we're going to end up catching a bunch of red squirrels and they're not legal for us to catch and keep. So what I'm going to do is a dirty trick. <laughs> you smiling yet, Jeremy? You know what I'm up to yet? <laughs> so I'm going to fill the trap up with walnuts that the squirrel can't get. <laughs> oh, okay. Because we don't want the squirrel to actually take them all and then stop coming in. So we okay. want them to have to work at getting them. And these smell very, very, very strong. I don't know if you guys have ever smelt them, but they're super strong. So we're going to deploy the trap. And now we have a trap that's going to draw squirrels in <laughs> until they figure out that they can't actually get them. And maybe we'll keep a couple extra on the outside. And we're going to put it down by the cabin. So every time we walk by, we can have a peek to see if there's anything down there grabbing them so this should work hopefully yeah they smell like lemons they smell lemony yeah they very very strong they lemon smell really good but they draw in squirrels for miles and miles and miles just because yeah. it's such a treat for them yeah so we can only get the fox squirrels so that's the blacks the black squirrels and the gray squirrels so i'm going to throw this up down about 30 40 yards from the cabin here and we should uh we should draw some in we got to watch out for these ones because they're going to come up in the deck and grab these as well. Yeah. But they're a little bit more protected because they don't want to be around us. But they're going to be free to grab them in the woods here. So we're not going to give up just yet with the raccoons. We've got ourselves a little game collar. It's a Fox Pro. So if we play some raccoons fighting, it might draw them out of the cover. So we're going to go back to the stand and it's going to be round number two. <laughs> we're going to throw everything at this. We can do some, we can do some crows, but I don't really have a great spot for crow and then I got to bring all the crow decoys out and we got to be 100% full camo so maybe if this doesn't work we'll try that or we're going to be eating apples all right let's go back to the stand fire this up Scroll down. We're not here for squirrels, <laughs> we're here for a raccoon. That's gonna have to feed us for lunch till we get something else tonight. Or we'll have to stay out here all day looking for squirrels. Turn that collar on now and see what happens. Jeremy said that this was this whole challenge was going to be a comparison between <laughs> <laughs> the gear. So Jeremy's got a taped up old 22. How old is that? Over 60 years old. 60 years old. It's got wood. Got a little bit of electrical tape there holding it together. Cooey bolt action. And I've got the modern 22 <laughs> Ruger synthetic <laughs> with a scope. <laughs> So far, I'm one for one though. Jer yeah. Well, Jeremy's got the new air air uh, air rifle. It's two for two, but zero for two on the kill. Yeah. So maybe if we would have got on that squirrel, the first squirrel early, we probably would have recovered it. But we we're obviously hoping to get something bigger. Yeah, it got away on us. Got away. There's lots of places for them to hide. The other one um, is probably still up in the tree. I have a video where it got stuck up in the tree, right in the in the 
The crotch. Crotch. I had to cut a stick to get it out. Oh yeah. It was a, it was high up, like 30 feet. Yeah. 20, 30 feet. So <laughs> I got it out. You guys got to weigh your uh, your firepower because you don't want to over over fire something. You want to use like a shotgun can just wreck it. Yeah. So you may not want to use a shotgun unless you you know run and gun. But if you're sitting snipe, 22 is pretty good to get the headshots on them. So that's a pot that Jeremy started yesterday. It's uh, fats and venison, I think, and a bunch of other things. So we'll keep adding to the pot. He's actually working on a turkey. Not that we shot though. It is a turkey that he found on the road. I think uh, Jeremy's pretty famous for eating roadkill. Yep. Pretty famous for eating roadkill. It's like my only claim to fame. <laughs> so you found that on the highway? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I got a, had a detour because um, the main highway coming here had so many accidents that my GPS kind of detoured me to a better route. And I spotted this guy, I did a U-turn, went over and he looked uh, like he was in not terrible shape. So I just hustled him into the back of my car and then we hung him up in the dark last night. So this is my first chance to really have a good look at it. We have a powerhouse doghouse, runs off solar. And then we have the Energy Apex uh, battery unit. So that takes power off the solar. We also have a gas generator. I made, a, I brought, made, I made this. Yeah, I brought this out, tarp shelter, because we have a chest freezer out here because we were planning on getting like 10 raccoons. And so far we're skunked. We only have a skunk, that's how bad it is. Anyway, I brought you up here because I wanted to show you uh, the system that we have set up. Um, so we have the gas generator, which is going to run for backup for us, uh, Briggs and Stratton. So if all else fails, we could just run this, run the freezer off this. Um, but we have six batteries over here, car batteries. I showed this in a previous video if you guys want to figure out how to do that. So we've got the Apex uh, running three batteries. You can't do more than three on this as a setup. So it ends up being like 500 or 5,000 watts. Um, yeah, so the plan is to get a bunch of meat in that freezer and have surplus. I was really counting on getting more raccoon. Did I mention that already? So now the apex is charging and uh, we still have power down at the cabin because I've run the wire rather than through the apex uh, energy battery pack. Since all we have is one squirrel, we're gonna take full advantage of our staples. This is some wild rice. It's a traditional food grown in the wild. So we're gonna do one cup of rice and we're gonna put two cups of water and then we're gonna add probably a bunch of bear fat in there too. And then when it's all done, we'll add some of our maple syrup. So that will be our, obviously our staples. We gotta get our game on. So this is bear fat. Uh, it's just rendered down fat. Looks like any other kind of lard. Just separate that from the cracklings. So obviously you're gonna put a, a good amount in there and then uh, mix it all in. And we're gonna cook this for about uh, 40 minutes. We'll put it on the stove as long as the stove is going. And we also have the uh, gas uh, powered uh, propane stove, which we'll do if this can't maintain the simmer. So we're gonna cover that until it is completely soft and uh, you're ready to eat. So it'll take about an hour, hour or 45 minutes on a low simmer until it's nice and soft. And hopefully the squirrel is ready at the same time and we can have some food before we go out and forage again.
since we were so busy, forgot to do the weigh-in, so we're gonna do it now before we eat. I don't know if that's backwards or forwards, but that's how we're doing it. And it doesn't really matter. We always gain weight, right, Jeremy? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Might be your best chance of gaining weight, though, considering you've been eating this diet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I at least maintaining. Lost 35 pounds this year, and I've been stable for like four months. So I'll be interested to see if I go up or down or just kind of stay about the same. Yeah. Oh, well, anyway. All right. So jump on the scale. All right. There we just, go. Just step on it. Jeremy's going to go first. Without blocking it, what are you, 164? That sound right? Yep, with all these clothes on. Yeah, yeah so I got my long johns, my pants, three shirts, right. my hat. So we are 142.8. All right. So we're joining oh, yourself. Yeah, 142.8 TWB. There we go. All right. Smells very uh, gamey. What was in there before? Everything. <laughs> so there's uh, venison broth, duck, wild cranberries, walnuts, wild rice, bear fat. <sighs> Whew, good God. You have a meal with it, maple syrup. <laughs> a few apples. So there's a piece of squirrel meat there. I'll give you the taste. Probably tastes like the broth and everything else now. It's not chewy. No. No. It's just hard to get off the bone, right? It's not chewy at all. No. The combination of the salts and the fats help break it down. Yeah. I checked the trail camera on the way out. I had everything. It yeah. had coyote, deer, a bunch of turkeys, squirrels. It didn't have a raccoon, but it had a, we had a raccoon on the other trail camera. Yeah. yeah. So we've got everything here. So we got. An apple tree, it's got red apples. These are wild apples, by the way. We're not at an orchard, although it would seem to be. And uh, Jeremy's just helping himself to some yellow apples. Got some drops here. Which apples are better? Do you like those uh, yellow ones or the red ones? I like them both. The red ones are sweeter, but these ones are crispier. Yeah, I don't mind either. So these are, in truth, these are probably all European uh, brought in apple species, right? Yeah. And uh, they're just feral because when Europeans came here, they needed to feed their cattle something and themselves. Yeah. And now nobody gives a poop about these apple trees anymore. But uh, you go, end up going to the orchard, you get those spray, not organic anymore. These are perfectly organic. You just have to deal with a little bit more rot. But nothing wrong with them. The flavor is good. And uh, if, you want, if you like cider or pies, it's good, all good for that. And eating just by itself. Yeah. I brought an apple picker. I just have to make a handle for it. It'll let us reach all the ones up high. Because uh, a lot of the time, the ones down low, the deer get at them, right? By standing up a bit. I have a way to get the apples down. Yeah. Shake the tree. Yeah. yeah. With, with your chainsaw? <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't even know we had these uh, other berries around but this is a high bush cranberry uh just right next to the apple tree and i tried one and it's pretty it's pretty sour in comparison to the apples the apples are very sweet uh jared says he's gonna he's gonna have to cook it down a little bit to uh, i guess release the sugars and add a little bit of sugar to it so some apple in with the cranberries would actually be a good mix jeremy's planning on filling up his vehicle to take home with him so that he can make some cider and all that good stuff so we've got quite a bit of work to do but we got quite a bit of apples too I have to make some applesauce. 15 gallons or so total if it's full, right? 15 yep. gallons if it's full? Yep. So, uh, seven and a half gallons. <laughs> it's getting all confusing. Anyway, there's a lot of apples, put it that way. All right, what do we do with the walnut? Husk it. And then what? Eat it. I wouldn't no. eat that. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I'll have all stained lips. Just uh, take the nut out, throw the husks away or what we're going to do is use them for uh, squirrel bait. Take some of that off and then let them dry out. I don't know what people do to get like the rest of it off. I thought maybe... Wash. Pressure wash? Scrub yeah, them? Just Scrub wash them in it. a bucket of water? Yeah. Bucket of water and then rinse it off and then you'll have some of the ink and taste. So after you husk you end up with something like that. That's the actual nut but it's not dry so you can't crack it open because it's kind of spongy. 
which is exactly what the nut wants you to think and do because it wants you to actually go store it someplace to dry it and then forget about it and it turns into a walnut tree but we're smarter than the walnut tree so we're going to dry it properly where it can't get taken um, we'll put it on the stove and let it dry or near the stove and dry it out and hopefully by the end of this challenge we have a bite of the walnuts so you'll have to watch all the way to the end to find out what they taste like all right so jeremy's going to do a little bit more of that uh i'm packing up because i'm going to another property and uh we're splitting up we're splitting up or we're dividing up what was the word we figured splitting out up. splitting up we're splitting up but hopefully jeremy shoots a deer and i shoot a deer and then we have lots of deer to eat because we're certainly not eating lots of raccoon and Jeremy's going to bait the traps on the way out. Um, hopefully that'll double our chances of getting a raccoon. We're just settled in here now. There's got a spot. It's overlooking a swamp over here. There's a cornfield over here. And then there's a big fence row here. It's all fallow. So it's basically a funnel coming this way for the deer. So this is the cover. Before they get to the cornfield, the corn's still up. There's tons of deer tracks here. It's all bedding over this way here. So what I'm hoping is gonna happen is they're gonna come from the bedding here out to the corn. Now they might come from the corn back over here too because they might be spending some time out in the corn. Give you guys a look on this side. It's open, but it's also very, very dense. Over here on this side, I don't really have any shooting lanes. A couple here. So I'm hoping the deer come from this side. This is my best chance over here. So I'm just gonna settle in here now. And we're gonna see what the world gives us. If it gives us a deer, we're gonna eat it. I'm getting hungry again. Those apples, they only go so far. We decided that if we don't get a deer, or even if we do get a deer, we're gonna make ourselves some apple cobbler. So we're gonna go apples acorn flour and maple syrup that'll be smashing so that's going to be dinner dinner's going to be breakfast unless we can get ourselves some actual food all right i'm going to put you on the camera arm All right, Jay, show off your trophies. What'd you get? Yeah, I redeemed myself with the air gun. Three shots, three squirrels. One, two, three. All blacks and a gray? Yeah. Two blacks and a gray? Two blacks and a gray. Oh, perfect. It's gonna go back in the forever stew. Yep. Right on, we'll add some mixed syrup to it and maybe some rice later. Yeah. If it's ready for before bed. Yeah. We might want to put a little bit more water in it too. But uh, that'll be a good addition. Cool, and I'll add some. Uh, well, I'll make the call. I'll start the cobbler anyway. Yeah. Let's see where we're at. Yeah. Okay, Jeremy's gonna clean the squirrels. I'm gonna start on the cobbler, and uh, hopefully within an hour or so, we'll have something to eat. Stuff them in there. Now we have too much squirrel. Oops, I'll throw one in the freezer. <laughs> Look at that. Three squirrels having a swim. Yep. I added uh, some acorns that Jeremy's been collecting uh, throughout the season. So, so what did you say 80 liters you got so far? Of yeah. acorns? Yeah, and these are last year's ones that I had stocked on. It. Oh, last year's. So yeah. they, you, you take them out of the out of the shell and then you leach them, so that gets rid of the tannins, right? Yep. Yeah. And the squirrel uh, looks good, but it's not. Oh, it's getting close. Um, probably in an hour from now, we might be able to eat that. It's only yeah. day one. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to believe it's day one because 
of all the work we put in. Yeah. We haven't stopped since what? Before sunrise and we're going till after yeah. the sunset. Tomorrow's probably gonna be the same. Although with rain in the forecast, we might yeah. do some processing stuff instead of hunting, but we'll see what happens, eh? Well the the kicker is gonna be whether we get a raccoon. That's kind of been my whole year is just um, really unexciting colors of food, but like fabulous wild tastes of food. I had one growth I could have shot. Oh yeah. Which is unique for here. It walked up and then um, had tons of squirrels. I didn't film any of this because you know, the squirrels are just running around with cobs of corn all the time. And then right at dark, uh, it was either the grouse kind of coming downwind, which doesn't make any sense. It was Not probably really gross a, behavior. It was probably a deer. So I was probably within 40, 50 yards of a deer. Um, but it, it cut my trail where I was walked in. Where I walked in and then it came back around, made its way around to the, the downwind side, but it didn't make a fuss. Welcome to day two of the Wilderness Living Challenge season six, I think it is. I don't even know anymore. We're gonna go out, we're gonna make sure our coon traps are still baited. Uh, because if they're not working properly, we are not going to have anything to eat tomorrow. Uh, it's supposed to rain uh, starting like 2 a.m. or something all day till 5. So we're not going to be hunting deer in the rain, put it that way. So let's go get our traps set. I don't know, what is it? Corn pieces and like peanuts? Peanuts is spoiled foods that we're not allowed to eat. Yep. And then Jerry's got, uh, what, the bag of squirrels? S Remnants? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Get through this swampy bit and we're just about up to the trap. Last trap. We baited all the other ones. Oh, that was almost over my boot. Well, we got some good news. There's actually a raccoon already in the trap. So that kind of solves our problem with the raccoons. Right, Jer? Yeah. All right, so we got a raccoon. So we got something to do tomorrow. We can make some coon burgers. How does that sound, Jer? Well, it's good to me. You're looking up at the trees? Yeah. <laughs> See what's around. You never know. Yeah. The All traveling right. herds, so. Well, we got to do something with this guy. Rebate the trap. And uh, I don't think we're going to process it tonight, but. First thing in the a.m. Yep. In the rain. Yeah. And we got to check the traps again tomorrow morning. and Maybe we'll have uh, five more to go with it. Yeah. That'd be That'd good. be all right. Yeah. Why not? Does that make you hungry? No. You're not I'm, hungry anymore? I'm pretty full. Yeah, we had a pretty good uh, dinner. Well, we didn't even eat uh, the dinner part. <laughs> we just had dessert. It's gonna be nice and tender squirrel for breakfast though. Yeah. And uh, raccoon for lunch. But uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. We already know what we're doing. We're eating squirrels. I mean, yeah, we are eating squirrels. We're eating squirrels and raccoons. Well, good morning guys. It's raining and we knew it was gonna rain. How's my beard look? A little scruffy? A little scruffy. Anyway, I got a little bit wet. Sleeping out here, this part of here was. Well, when it first came in, it was kind of blowy and rainy, so I was getting dripped on. I brought my sleeping bag inside, hung it up. Uh, I have to bring the rest of the stuff in here, let it dry too, but we gotta get a fire going and the wood's, wood's kind of wet out here. Anyway. I'm gonna get uh, some of our leftovers on. We have uh, apple, uh, a little bit of apple left. Uh, we'll cook some wild rice, and then we'll get our squirrel back going because we didn't really eat any of that last night. It should be starting to get tender now, so we'll throw that on the uh, stove. We got the uh, propane all set up, ready to go. Jeremy's up and at him. I woke up! <laughs> Squirrel's almost tenderized. He's breaking it apart. Jeremy's got some sea salt. Is it sea salt from Granada or whatever? It is, yeah. Granada sea salt in there to help break the... I don't think muscle breaks down if you don't put any salt in there. That's my thought anyway. Been working on our fireplace issues. Keeps getting blocked up. To let uh, Kevin know that the uh, fire is not good and we want to upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a message below. Yeah, right. <laughs> Take Kevin's witch up here. <laughs> yeah. See if 
reflects that dry kidling. I can hear some thumping. Come in! Hey! Holy heat going on in here! <laughs> yeah, she's a, she's a warm. And so Mark came in. You uh, got a place for him to sit? Yeah, you can shuffle down here. You can sit and watch this heat unless you want to have some squirrel. No, I just ate right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, have a seat over here so you're in the frame. You guys know Mark, he was, uh, he's been on a, more than a few of my videos. How's it going? Good. Nice Jeremy, you. Mark, nice to meet you. have a seat. I Feel hear free about to... you, but uh, yeah. yeah. Squirrel, eh? Squirrel. How many squirrels did you get? Three. What is this? Squirrel. You're a head squirrel? No. Venison broth? Don't be afraid of it. I'm, I'm not afraid, afraid. <laughs> I'm just, it's kind of weird for Top me. Broth? Yeah. Oh, it smells good. Yeah, it's yeah. really rich. You're one of those, um, if it's like, it's the mainstream turkey, deer, m you know, bear, moose, whatever. Squirrel's like, a little bit, That's good. A little bit sold on it now. It's, not, it's actually it's quite good. There's only salt in there too. There's not even any spice. Like try, I don't care if you stick your fingers in there, but try, try with the maple syrup. Maple rice syrup and, spice. and rice and spice, and like adobo? Adobo, yeah. That's good. Like you can eat that all day, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Right? I thought it'd be a little bit like chewy and... Good news, the field that I took you into before, mm -hmm. it just got cut. Uh, That's the beans. That's it, a really good field. Yeah. <laughs> in the last two days it was cut because two days ago it was not cut. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming it was cut yesterday because everybody was cutting beans mm -hmm. crazy yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Bad news is they're all going into a bean field. Like everything is off the water. All the the rivers are empty. I heard them fly off the river at my house. Yep. Then I went out and checked all the rivers, spots that I know of that they're all hanging out in. Plus I checked a pond. All the birds are out. But we could possibly decoy them into um, the, the same field the that we were in. The same field that we were in. Because it's not far away. Just, no. And they could they'll be able to hear calls from the river. Pretty. Like yeah, yeah, well, you're going to hear them coming up off the pond. Right, yeah. So, All right. so there's a possibility. Hopefully get into some, some uh, While I was deer hunting, the geese were flying over me and going right over um, the farm and right past that field. I told you you could get into the standing corn. You might be able to decoy them into that on a warm day. Okay. A day like today, you'd never get them in there, but... Mm -hmm. So that's a possibility, too. Okay. All right, that was good. We're gonna finish hey. up eating here. We're gonna keep chatting, and then we're gonna go do something fun. We are going to go chuck our coon traps, and we're gonna get five for five. I think that's the goal here. Get the twenty-two. Turn the lights off so we're not using so much power. Turkey leg. Yep. Oh, <laughs> I still there. Yep. Turkey leg, pieces of squirrel bits, and some apples. Yep. You see how much effort we've put into these traps now. We've got <laughs> like turkey feathers everywhere, turkey guts, squirrel guts. I mean, it's a mess. There's a peanut butter jug and marshmallows. We've got the trail camera here, but probably nothing on it. We've got one more trap set here. We got, oh, I forgot to say that we got rabbit trap set. And that trap over there is not set off, so there's no coon there. That's all for two. Maybe we'll have better luck with the cottontail trap the cottontail trap we put uh apple peels in i don't know there's lots of apples around i don't know why they'd want to go in a trap but we put it right in their home turf i found a spot here where they're hanging out and they're uh they've kind of mowed the grass down and they hang around in this little thicket here i've got a deer stand here that i don't use anymore because i sat there for a whole season didn't catch anything there's a tree stand up in that tree there and I just actually made this trail not too long ago to try to get the deer to use this little runway. Grass in here is only grass like that because the rabbits have been picking the tops off of it continuously. So there's a big thicket here where the rabbits can mill around and have been. Oh, so only one deer in the middle of the night came through. Big fat doe. That's no good. So third trap here, nothing in it. Bait's still all in there for the most part. Rebate. Yeah. And now you're a masturbator. <laughs> oh, there's a chipmunk. Hold on. Oh, shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> a chipmunk just stealing our baits. 
Oh for four. One more. Lucky number five. And Jeremy's doing some maintenance now. He's full of energy. Yep. From breakfast. Gonna throw some logs down here so we don't get our boots wet. Coming up on the last trap here. Brutes. Did you say brutes? Brutes. <laughs> Brutal. Brutes, man. It's the brutes. All right, let's go get dry. Yep. No raccoons. Not even any squirrels walking around. So much rain right now. This is gonna shut us down. So, shut all the other animals down, shut us down too. Jeremy's just going for a walk to see if he can find a turkey. There's been some turkeys hanging around the property too. It's gonna be a slow day. It's gonna be a relaxed day, I guess. Just eat some foods, catch up on calories, come up with a plan. There we go, it's gonna be dinner. Well, I bet you always wanted to know how to cook yourself a coon, so we're gonna teach you how right now. Right, Jer? Yep. We're gonna teach ourselves too. You ever done a pot roast raccoon? Yep. Yeah? Yeah, it was really good. It was, it was uh, really similar to roast chicken, dark meat. Oh yeah? Yeah, it was really good. This is like the perfect size too. Yeah, I just nest right in there. <laughs> Well, we're gonna cut a bunch of apples up, peel them up, and then probably fill it up full so it'll kind of steam and cook. Uh, fruit goes really well with meat, right? Sweets and berries and yeah. And pork. of course, we're gonna put some maple syrup on top after. Yep. And then we'll serve this. I was gonna say. So the only thing that doesn't care if it rains is fish and beavers. Sound about right? Yep. Uh, and deer. <laughs> deer care. <laughs> we had a discussion about whether deer would be good weather for hunting deer and I never see any deer in the rain, none. So raccoons all ready to go. Um, we're gonna go to the fish pond, we're gonna catch a fish. If you can't tell, every season we're moving further and further away from gene being exclusively wild. And that's by adding in a little bit of agriculture here and there. So hey, maybe one year we'll do like a gardening edition where you know, plant the garden all summer and then just feast off of it in the fall. That would be fun. And we can do it here out of the cabin too. So I'm not even gonna fish here. I'm gonna let Jeremy have the honors because Jeremy's not a very good fisherman. So any chance he can have oh. to catch a fish. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If Jeremy can't catch a fish in here. Oh, you already got one, don't you? Oh, they're just ignoring you. Yeah, they don't like worms. There you go. It's a good looking fish. Yeah. We got lots of power in these things too. Yeah. So every every fish is kind of different. The trick for this fish is basically to cast in and then let it sit on the ground on the bottom because uh, they're used to not eating things that move. Oh, you got a small one. Oh. <laughs> Smaller. The, none of them are real small, but I mean, these would be great any time of day. Now we got the Fox Pro game caller now. Since we're here, and we actually talked to the owner on the way in, and he said there's a big raccoon problem. They want them gone. They're pulling down all the corn. So we're gonna try the uh, the uh, coon fighting uh, set here. So we'll see if we can't drag something out. We did try the set before here uh, with Mark, and just as a goof, and we waited maybe five minutes, and, we, and like, okay, there's nothing coming, and then we started walking, and then. Mark noticed something scurry back up the tree. Hopefully we can add a few raccoons to the uh, roster. We're not fishing anymore. Now we're hunting. So you have to go into hunting mode. Jer Jeremy's got his really old, old gun. We talked about it last episode. So you have to go check it out. I'm using my really, really new gun. It's a Ruger. 
We actually don't really need to whisper. We're gonna have a showdown. <laughs> We're gonna showdown. Old versus new. <laughs> Get a bunch of raccoons coming, it'll be a showdown for sure. <laughs> uh, we haven't figured out the raccoons yet. We don't know what they're doing. They're probably eating corn. It's my guess. So until those cornfields come down and they have to, you know, explore and find some different foods, we're gonna have a hard time getting them to go inside of a trap. Luck on the first run, unless you call calling crows luck. Probably a little high for shooting, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, they spotted us, so. <laughs> if we would have been camoed up and hiding, we <clears throat> probably could have got a crow. Yeah. The crows have pretty good eyesight, they're not stupid. We might even call in a coyote like this, too. It's all in season. We'll try one more maybe. Got some time before the evening hunt. That one was mealy. Here's a big tree that I probably at some point had a raccoon in there. Maybe there's a raccoon in there right now. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. I'm hungry. <laughs> this is pretty close to where we called the first time though, right? Yeah, we just froze right there. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's what you're looking for. Oh yeah, for sure. Trees like that. Like, I don't know if that's too hollow and they might get wet in it but I wonder how much energy it would cost to knock this thing over to see if there's a raccoon inside you're not curious to see if there's one inside well I think it would have come out but you think it would have come out just from kicking it yeah um. from kicking it or from playing the call nearby here those hollow trees look good All right, back in the cabin. I'm gonna get dried up. I'm gonna get ready for the evening hunt. We're gonna go back out for deer again. Um, put a little bit of wood in the stove and get that raccoon, like not cooking, cooking, but like starting to get cooked um, so that we don't have to wait like two or three hours. It's probably not gonna take that long, but we don't wanna be waiting until like 10, 10 p.m. Um, cooking that coon. We wanna be able to eat it when we get back. So if we partially cook it now and partially cook it later, that'll be all good. We want it to be nice and tenderized. I'm gonna heat myself up some leftovers. I got that squirrel leftover for this morning and those a uh, little bit of wild rice. And there's also the apple mash with the um, acorns. So I'm gonna cook that up real quick so I can go hunt on a full stomach. And I'll be able to sit a lot better. It won't be so cold. It's not, it's not the greatest weather in the world right now. Doing this challenge as a homestead edition has been great. Um, 
fire up the stove like that, turn it off like that, fantastic. Makes everything so much easier and doable. Now I know you don't think this looks very good. It looks like purple, purple mash. Acorns, apples, maple syrup, bear fat. It tastes like cake to me with the crust, pie crust mixed in. 100% wild apple, acorn, maple, cobbler. We got our trophy trout. I'm gonna go down to the creek here. It's the best place to clean up anyway. That way we don't make a mess of the camp and all that. And we're probably gonna throw the fish guts in that advanced trap. I think we got all so many guts in there. We might actually catch our coyote or something. I'd like to keep these trout in the creek here for breakfast. Cause I think with me just eating lunch and us having that coon really for dinner, late night dinner, and we're not really gonna need any other thing to eat. But it's good to have them here. Um, I could sink them in a trap, but then I have to disable a trap. You know, I could set, put them inside the live trap and, and then uh, nothing can really get at them. We're gonna clean these guys up so they're boneless. There's a way of doing it pretty much like I have been doing it which is just to cut around the head and then go up the butt and gut it. But then I can take the rib cage out. I think a lot of comments from season uh, two was that we should be using the fish guts and all that for bait. Well, you've seen how well our bait has worked so far and we've used even some modern leftovers for bait. The thing is, um, it doesn't, guts don't have a, like guts from a big animal for sure. Like a deer or something, that's, that's got a smell. You know, that's got a real smell that attracts things. But like fish guts, when they're fresh, they don't, they just don't smell. They don't have a big odor. So um, it's not gonna be a big attractant. I mean, we could put it in a plastic bag and over time, yeah, they will rot. If they're kept moist, man, this fish is just jammed full of food. I'm gonna keep that separate. Just ticking down on the ribs here. And then once we get down here, we'll just split it, split it open. But what we're mainly aiming for here is to get underneath and get the grass out of the way. It's obviously a lot easier to do on a table I just want to get under those ribs and then kind of pull them up a little bit because we're going to get behind it and then we're just going to follow that all the way to the belly. There we go. That's uh, hardly any waste, <laughs> you can tell right there. It's just the rib cage here. And of course you could, I mean, you could cook that and eat it, but there's hardly anything in there. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side and we're going to end up with a pretty much boneless trout. So this is a five gallon pail plus whatever was in that bag, which is probably half a pail at least, right? Yeah. So what do you think? Half of it's husk probably? More than More half. Because yeah. once this gets down, it's going to be not a huge pile of nuts, right? Yeah. Um, so it'll be pretty space efficient going home. Alrighty, almost ready to go. Got my ASAP camo. I'm not going to buckle this up yet. I'm gonna get halfway buckled because I gotta go to the other property. Jeremy's uh, 
already off and running because he wants to, he's focused on the squirrels. I don't blame him. Well, I mean, I don't blame him. <laughs> Might as well get a squirrel if you're not seeing any deer. I'm not gonna bring my 22 with me because uh, where I'm going, uh, same spot as yesterday. So it's a pretty tight spot that uh, if you move around at all, you're gonna, sp you're gonna spook any deer around. So if I shoot anything and then go back and try to find it, because if I shoot it, I have to go get it right away, I'm gonna lose it. Jeremy's going out to the cornfield, up this way. Um, we're gonna get a deer. We're gonna try, we're gonna do our best. All right guys, I'll meet you over at the tree stand. All right guys, here we go. We are at the other property. Uh, I wanted to say something, I don't really remember what I was gonna say. Oh, um, it's a lot of walking. The seasons, previous seasons, well, Texas was a lot of walking too. Um, different kind of walking though. This one I've got like, I don't know, 10 football fields before I get to my stand. Um, other seasons have been more canoeing, more paddling. Man, those fish seasons, we paddled a ton. But this is all land. Like there's not a whole lot of water around here. There's a couple of rivers where the geese will land, but we haven't any, managed, managed to get any permission for the, those properties. So here it's all, it's all terrestrial stuff. Kind of why we put the pond in to be honest, because then we'd have a place to fish up here. But uh, you guys think we're just going from one spot to the next and it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's not the case at all. I'm putting some miles on like crazy. I'm gonna show you kind of a little bit about the landscape that we're working with. It's definitely farm country. So I'm gonna set this camera aside and we're gonna meet you in the tree now. So that was my thought. <laughs> I'm gonna share, you, share that with you. I hope we get a deer. It's possible, but it's not likely. You never know, it might happen. Well, we're back at the cabin here. Uh, it looks like Jeremy is uh, got the lights on that or Kevin came out. Uh, Kevin and Grant were out here the other night. I'm excited to see how uh, Jeremy made it or maybe he's not back. Maybe it's Kevin. I'll have to have a peek. Yeah, it looks like somebody else. we got some visitors. Maybe it's Mark. Um, I only saw one deer out in the cornfield. And uh, it wasn't really one I was hunting because I wasn't hunting the cornfield. There's no way I was going to get out there that, that far. And uh, I did walk on a coyote. Um, I was within 10 yards just walking out in the field, so that was pretty cool. Let's see who's here. <laughs> Peek in the window. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That was a weird, weird shadow up top. Uh, freaked me out. Let me get the night vision off here. One squirrel. Did you get him? I did. Where is he? On the porch. Oh, all right. 29 yard shot. I checked it with uh, Adam's rangefinder. <laughs> you rangefinded it and shot it? Well, I did after. Yeah. And Mark, did you see anything? You didn't go out? I didn't go out. <laughs> nope. No? Nope. Cutting trees. But you got a plan for us? What's the plan? Uh, pigeon hunt. Okay. So there was probably 20 pigeons or so flying around uh, while we were cutting the trees from the hydro lines. And so they'll be in the barn, hopefully, now. Yeah. And we can take care of two problems. So Lack of food problem yeah. and yeah. clean up. Poopy the, hay problem. Hey? Uh, they give goats listeriosis. So here I am thinking we're gonna eat a raccoon and it's not even ready yet, but we're gonna leave it on the stove and hopefully it's ready by like two or 3 a.m. We'll have it for breakfast. We may have to cook that fish. Yeah. Anyway, all right, let's, we'll see if we can get some pigeons. All right, so the deal is we've got one gun. We're gonna use a pellet gun here. Well, if you come back early in the morning, the sun's coming up. Yeah. You might see.
see it. Can we come back with like a 22 or a, yeah, Jeremy has a little air rifle. We don't not going to shoot in here with the 22. No, you can shoot in here. Oh, not with the 22, but you can shoot with the hook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's got a pretty high power pellet gun. Well, it's one of those 500 feet. Yeah, Seven, 900? Nine, oh, it's yeah, it's, it's yeah. we don't want to shoot it in That's here, but we can, we can walk around gun. outside if you don't mind. Oh yeah, no, shoot as many as you can. Okay. But in the morning. They sometimes sit on the grain top of yeah. the grain. Yeah, I've seen them out, out in the back too. There. Oh, I know, but it's just early in the morning when the sun's coming up. They yeah. all sit there and it's warm. Yeah. And they sit there and then yeah, the, the bucks are fighting down there. Big, big, big <laughs> bucks. Yeah. 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 All right. But, well, yeah, if you don't get anything tonight, come back tomorrow morning. You might, okay. You know, like, early. You gotta be early. Though. Early, early. Like that uh, white one that just landed on the crossbar. The white one, the run to the right. Yeah. Take them both. <laughs> you do headshots with this? Is it pretty accurate? Yeah. That's an 0 for 1. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying for a headshot. Test the gun out. Show me how it's done. <laughs> Grab the light there, Jack. Which one wants to run this high power? Oh, you bugger. Mm -hmm. These pigeons are going to be good eating because they're grain fed. Nice. I'm going to take that before he falls down the hole. Okay. Want your light? That one? Head chop. <laughs> you gotta go way up there to get it. Oh, he's stuck on the bales up here. Oh, Hopefully he didn't fall between the bales or he's lost. Oh, he died quick. You have to pounce on him. Oh, you bugger. Did he go down? Find him? Well, oh, he's down and we're gonna be doing some crawling to get to him. Jerry's gonna do it. Jerry shot it. You gotta go over there, Jerry, in that little crack. Can you get through there or no? I don't know that he can get through there. It depends how tight Peter's got the bales together. I'd... I don't there's, know if I can get over there. There's posts in the way too, right? Sorry, if you fall in there, it's like a crocodile pit. Yeah, crocodile pit. Of, uh, I got Ruben here. Where's the pigeon? How hungry are you, Jerry? Well, if I, had a, if I had a stick with a hook, I could get it. Can you see it? No. Is that. Were you shining it on the pigeon there? Got started making one. If you're wondering why we're getting rid of them all, all up here is all droppings, all droppings, all here, and that causes disease in any of the farm animals here. It's all droppings, all of it. What the beams look like now is what the tops of these back bales will look like in about six months. And then they're gonna have to eat that. And then, yeah, well, yeah. it would be brushed off, but you're still always going to have some of it in the bales. So. Yeah, so that's the listeriosis issue. Yeah. Hold that or put him out of his misery, whatever you want to do. I'm going to put him on the ground and I'll step on him. Just uh, spit his head. Because we got to kind of catch him before they come down the hole. I saw it hit the wood. When you get down to your last one, I'll shoot. <laughs> Give me. Wow. There you go. Catch him. Oh! oh. Now you gotta right go down, down that hole. hole. <laughs> I won't be able to get out of there. Oh, yeah, you can. You got a rope if I can't? No, oh, I'll grab you. It's a long ways down. No, it's three bales high. Is that it? Yep. Yeah. You can jump onto the first one, yeah. and then I can reach your hand. That's what we had to do last time. <sighs> we've done Man. this. Be we've been down this road before. Okay. <laughs> Take your. Give me your wallet. Here's a here's a pellet. If I can't get out, you just shoot me. <laughs> Put you out of your misery. <laughs> hey, we better not put this high power light up. Put it on low beam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, blind the poor man. I'm really claustrophobic, guys. 
Can you still see the bird? Little, little Timmy. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the throw. Little Timmy fell in a well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're light. Got it. Caught it. Yeah. Hand it up to me if you want. And then, uh. And then it'll be in the dark then. Here. Yeah. That's all right. You are too scared. Here, <laughs> give me your arm. Ready? Yep. Okay. Jump. Almost <laughs> there. <laughs> That's an adventure. <laughs> Where's the other one I have to dive for? Uh, he's down this hole. You're all fired yeah. up now. Yeah. Get him while he's hot. But he won't be as claustrophobic because there's a doorway there. Oh. Well, let's go open the door. Well, it is open. Oh, the door is open. Yep. Yeah. Swear I let Jeremy shoot them all. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to go get them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is half the fun, though. That one? Yeah. Here, take him and step on him. You still kicking. Oh, he's still going? Yeah, yeah. Three so far, and there's another one down there. So it's four. Ready? Yeah. All right. We actually managed to get uh, five, but. Uh, we lost two. Well, we didn't lose them. We just fed them to the cats. <laughs> they fell down uh, in between the bales. Well, that was a fun little adventure, little side detour. That's why it's nice to have connections. Um, and speaking of connections, tomorrow we have a good plan. Tomorrow we're going to set out for geese. Mark's got uh, access to a bunch of different good properties where geese are landing and they just harvested all the soybean. So that's what we're gonna be doing tomorrow. We'll probably fire that up because it has to be eaten anyway. We've got some rice on the go, which I have to check to see if that's done. But uh, it'd be nice to have a camp person that's just kind of hang around and feed us <laughs> while we just keep going and doing forays and finding more food. I'm gonna just flip this raccoon over. Bottom's not too bad. Probably almost done. A little on the chewy side, maybe. Apples are all done. It's got a nice broth on the bottom here. Smells good. Now we're steaming up. So that raccoon doesn't actually smell half bad. Doesn't smell like a raccoon at all, which means it's probably gonna taste pretty good. That goes the processing. Good, I had wanted to finish them before we went for our evening hunt, but I didn't. But I thought I'll finish them up while uh, that raccoon finishes cooking. Bag, my sleeping bag actually got wet. So that's why I'm not so happy with the rain tonight. I'll try to tuck in a little bit closer here. Only the top bag got wet, but it didn't rain as much as it is. Well, it probably did rain quite a bit overnight, right? It rained more in the night than it did during the day. Yeah. It's today more than it is right now. Yeah. Today wasn't too bad. Coon is served. Ready for it? Uh, I'm so ready for that. <laughs> it smells uh, apple -y. So you want half this rice? <laughs> yeah. Right. Half, half of it, and then I'm gonna save half for breakfast. I think probably. Oh yeah. Let's have a bite to eat before we go out goose hunting, cause I'm gonna be hungry. You gonna take a bite of that coon? Yeah. Looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah. Should be the best raccoon oh. you ever had, probably. It's really appley and good. It's like. Uh, probably tastes a little bit like pork. Like pork apple. Yeah, it looks like it's got that white <laughs> pork texture. Well, I'm going to fill up on this. I'm assuming Jeremy's going to be doing the same. Uh -huh. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. See you tomorrow. Day three. Well, good morning, everybody. Today is day three of the Wilderness Living Challenge, season number six. We've got a propane tank sitting over here. We're turning it off at night, and that will run our stove. So just down here, propane tank, we open that up. I'm gonna turn that off at night so we don't explode the whole damn place and fire up the camper. It's an old RV camper stove. How's that fire? It's out. Out! Totally out. So we gotta get that rocking again because we have some leftover raccoon that needs heating. So I'm gonna get, uh, that's my underwear. <laughs> I thought it was my hat. So I'm gonna get camel on. <laughs> it funny if put it on. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, we're gonna get uh, camel on, camel up, P 
peed up and uh, we're going to be Mark at the front. He's going to pick us up with all the geese decoys. Well, there is an ash pan on the side. How do you get the ashes out? I'm missing, I'm missing a light here. There we go. I don't know you can see what you're doing. I'm taking the ash out of the hole. Uh, I think it'll burn a lot better now that it's going to be sitting down where it's supposed to be sitting down instead of raised up. I think we forgot to clean this out when we put it back in. Yeah. Um, after the winter. We just threw it back in and then we thought, well, we're going to get the shop back out here and suck it out. Oh. And it never happened. The shop vac? Well, we were going to scoop it and then shop vac it. A bad project to start. Probably. A few minutes before we have to go. Our latch here is all seized up. There's a latch down below here, and it won't let us open this thing up. Oh, look at what? Oh, what? Worked. What? I guess they smashed it enough times. I thought it. I thought it turned. There we go. Now we can open it and we can clean this out and make it work properly. Because there's a, a pan here that's full of junk, and then it's not letting the oxygen come in the back, so it's always puffing smoke in there. So there you go, Jer. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get our decoy set up before the geese start landing in the field. Otherwise, they're gonna figure us out. Oh, camouflage some, jacket. Some ASAT camo for you. Thanks. Considering you're gonna be the black beast. Yeah. It's not gonna work for geese. I'm just disguised as the Angus cattle. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna lay down in the field or I'm just gonna pretend go on my all, you're eating? All fours and just say moo. <laughs> not exactly a meal to go. I probably could take it to go. Should I take it to go? Yeah. People eat all sorts of things to do something. Might be, Mark might be particular about what you eat in this truck. Dude, I didn't get bring something to sit on. I can get two pails back there and grab a third. Yeah. I have my camera yeah, case. I can so. run down and get my camera case in the seat. It won't take me like two seconds. Don't worry about it. I'd mm -hmm. sit on a pail anyways, because you're going to have wet grass all around you and just get okay. soaked. We're looking good? We're looking good. We're actually two minutes early. <laughs> and so we're gonna go hit a cornfield. Hopefully the wind dies down when the yeah. sun starts to rise. It should. Uh, it's been windy all night. Yeah. I, uh, and I know it because I was sleeping outside. It, did you sleep outside? <laughs> Get sprinkled on a little bit. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, so yesterday, after I saw you in the morning and there was nothing there, I crossed back past the same field yeah. and there was probably 200-ish birds. What? <laughs> 200? So even if at sunrise you don't see them, it's going to be a kind of a crappy day. Yeah. Just just ride it out and sit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get a chance to eat all my breakfast. So here we are. We got all the decoys all set up in the dark here. They're all brushed in. Mark was saying there's 200 birds that landed in here. I was just sitting on a pail and right up against the tree here. Jamie's going to be on the other side. The wind's coming from this direction, so the birds are going to come in this way. We're just going to swing you guys around once we get set. We're hoping the birds fly. It's pretty windy. Lots of corn in the field sitting around. So if they're hungry and motivated, they're going to find us. We're gonna find them. Sunrise. Should be geese soon. Where are they? We were set up at 4:30. We saw, we saw, we saw, we saw. 4:30 like, p.m. Yeah. And then it was like 20 minutes to dark. We're like, well, I guess nothing's happening. And then, <laughs> and they just started pouring into the. Yeah. And it was still shooting light, but it was like, you couldn't really see them coming, but you could hear them. And yeah. got a little bit fast and furious there for like 10 minutes. Just like shot, no, sight or over. sound shoot them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here comes a missile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put on the blindfold and the... <laughs> Jedi senses. Yeah. <laughs> Jedi duck hunting. 
shoot by ear yep and feelings <laughs> <laughs> i feel hungry i feel like there's a duck there <laughs> got him whatever you go <laughs> They're pretty close. Oh, there was our chance. We had uh, nine shots at one goose, and it got hit, but it just didn't go down. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you could have easily just, you know, hit wing or whatever. Well, we the hit, tips of wings we hit stuff, them. They got hit. Yeah. <laughs> it just didn't go down. Yeah, I hit two, but I don't know if Chris hit them. <laughs> So we're gonna add the duck decoys in here. Mark's a better shooter than Jeremy and me. He's not hearing that. So maybe we'll get some on the ground. It's still windy, but uh, at least they're up in the air now. So get all these set up and we'll get hunkered back down and we have some better luck. Landed over in the corn. We okay. landed. Yeah. That's a hungry, hungry man. He's a military crawling it. He's only doing that because it's my jacket. And he's got to realize how far he's got to go still. He's gonna put the beat down oh, halfway up to his knees. So Jeremy's out there doing a belly crawl because a bunch of geese landed over on the other side. We'll see if he uh, can manage to sneak up on them. There's at least three drop down and then the other three knocked in a bunch of other ones, so. Oh, there's, uh, oh, up, up, up. there they're up here. Above the tree. Hit them if you can, because I can't. Okay, hit him. I got that one. Yeah, I got the first one there, but you got the second Woo! one. Woo! <laughs> okay, there's, that guy's got his head up. He's Which guy? Hold on. My guy, your, oh, your guy. Yeah, my guy's got his head up. Okay. Get him? I got him. He gone. Well, we all got a bird now. <laughs> <laughs> one, yeah, yeah, four shots of a bird. Yeah, <laughs> got him on my first shot, I think. And then I tried to hit something through the branches here, but I missed. Unless I hit one and it fell not he's there, I don't know. No, I only saw the one bird fall. Oh, birds, 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 birds. You're bushed right in now. I'm invisible. Pretty much. Invisible or visible? Invisible. <laughs> Unvisible. I'm non-visible. Non-visible? Non all that ASAP I'm camo. visible -less. And grass. Yeah. They just turned. Hit him, hit him.
like Jeremy's way though. Chasing him down is like slower. I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go faster. Yeah, yeah. Those are far out. They yeah. didn't. We didn't shoot them that far, did we? Fairly so, far, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Seems far now. Way further than in. we normally would, but they're flaring once they get real close, right? Yeah. So, not bad at all. Not bad for the, the group of guys we're running today. Not bad for the group of guys <laughs> and the wind. The wind is brutal. Yeah. It's our best fall yet. That was nice. I like that one. Oh, we did all right. We got eight in total. We could have done better than that, but uh, you know, <laughs> we're all amateurs except for Mark. Mark's an expert. Jeremy's semi-pro. Uh, I'm, I'm no semi expert. No, I'm just joking. That's for sure. We're all kind of learning. I got to get the uh, coon going because that those geese are not going to be ready to go anytime soon. Um, so let's get this fired up here. There we go. We'll throw our raccoon on there and I'm probably gonna dump a bunch of rice once it heats up and we'll let that get ready. It's already cooked as you know from yesterday. Oh, we just got to get it so it's kind of tenderized and warm. We want a warm afternoon and Jeremy's gonna be out really busy. We gotta upgrade the meat pole and uh, we'll get all our wild animals hung. We got now, eight, is it eight that we got Jeremy? Yeah. Eight geese, uh, a squirrel, something else? Three pigeons. Three pigeons, right. I forgot about the pigeons. And two, and two rainbow trout. And two rainbow trout. Oh, Mark's not part of the competition. He's just, uh, he's the guide, the guide service. So he technically shot a couple of geese. So you can take a, geese, a couple of geese home as long as Jeremy doesn't want to let you have some or let you have some, but he doesn't. My geese are all a gift to Jeremy for eating at home outside of the challenge. Yeah, and Jeremy's going to be taking probably most of this home. I think we're going to eat maybe two, maybe two during this challenge. So any of the surplus is obviously going home with him. There's no way we can eat eight geese or would want to or would want to try. So, I mean, there's a lot of abundance when it comes to the wild foods, but you're going to get a whole bunch of things all at the same time. We thought about doing like a, a, go, a goose with a pigeon in it. So that would be a, a goujin. And then if we got one of those sparrows, it would be a Gujan Gujin, arrow, but I don't think we're gonna get a sparrow. We might put a pigeon in though. If not, we'll stuff it with apples, uh, some bear fat and some rice, and that'll be perfect goose. And we'll throw it in the oven. It's pretty nice to have this cabin to change in and get warmed up in once we get this fire blazing. Perfect. Just take the chill off and, and just use less energy when you don't have to be cold all the time. So have some place comfortable to set up, have all our gear here. Past seasons we've been working out of tents, working out of vehicles, just traveling all over the place. This is, this is real homesteading. Fire, gas stove to cook on. That kitchen's gonna be looking good. We just wanna get that rice finished up now. And it's been sitting there cooking, over, well not cooking overnight, but just kind of resting overnight. Now it's all fall off the bone. And my mouth is watering. So the reality of things is we still got a ton of work to do. We haven't even processed the goose yet. Uh, it's a little bit past lunch. Pigeons are still hanging. Make sure our fire's going. I'm gonna keep that topped up because we're gonna make it roasty, roasty hot in here. And then uh, check the status of our, Whew, that's a little high. That's all right, we'll turn it down. Let's get that cranked down a little bit more. We gotta get at least one goose prepared so that we can uh, cook it overnight. We'll probably eat the rest of this. Probably eat those fish tonight. Oh, the fish, I forgot about the fish. We're too far ahead of ourselves. We so are. We have too much meat. We're just about right though, I think. We're always like one or two, no, we're one meal ahead so far every time. Now we're two meals ahead. So we're kind of, I mean, if you count all the geese, we're several meals ahead. Yeah. Um, but we're looking really good. So yeah, we probably eat the fish. We, this is leftovers plus the fish and we're going to get a deer tonight. Hmm. Okay. How about that? Sure. I think it's possible. That's, that's it's possible. That Anytime we go out, it could happen, right? It, exactly. And that would be pretty sweet if we could put it together. How long did that take? 40 minutes it's been so far. Yeah. We got some in the beard. Do I? <laughs> a little bit. I feel like it's in my eyelashes and in my nose and everything. 
It's everywhere. Yeah, be slow stuff. This one was a better bird to pluck than the one you started on because it already had all of its feathers grown in. Take it to the axe. Yeah, done? Yeah. Yeah, just gotta get the guts out of it and then maybe do a little bit of a final pick over and it's ready to cook. Have I got any feathers in my beard? Some feathers and some gray hair. Just a little bit, right there. Now that, you're 30. now that I'm 30. I just turned 30, just got my first gray hairs in there. So what's the procedure? Kind of like what I did with the squirrel, I just cut like along the tailbone there. Yep. And then I'm gonna cut up the one side. On the other side, so the cloaca is free. Fat, eh? Yeah. Well, better grab me a little clean bowl or something. Because I'm going to want to grab that before it hits the ground. All right, so Jeremy's just going to get the guts out here. And we're going to get it in the prepped in the pot, maybe. I don't know if we'll get it in the pot. We have time or not. But uh, I'm going to get my stuff on and ready to go for hunting. I'm going to go to a new property, as they've mentioned. And hopefully have a better chance at deer. It's the perfect weather for deer. Not for people, but for deer. It is cold. It's warm in here though. <laughs> you got so many feathers in your beard. Yeah. It doesn't fit. I have to cut them in half. No, I'll stuff her in there. It'll fit. It just needs a little folding. Yeah. It'll, it'll fold right in there. You can cut the tail off too, maybe. I'm just gonna whip this lid on there for now. It'll keep it mostly safe and cool. <sighs> All right, now I gotta get dressed and ready for hunting. So the beautiful thing about video is that two minutes ago, I was talking about getting ready. No, it was about 15 minutes ago. We've got everything set. The cabin's all ready to go. Goose is in the pot. So Jeremy's gonna head out to another spot over at the other side of the property. I've got 500 acres to play with. Uh, show me what you're using. Cause I'm using a compound bow. You guys see me use that already. I think we showed this probably uh, two videos ago in the series. It's got a Excalibur Grizzly. Yeah, an old Excalibur crossbow. But all, if you're going to get any kind of crossbow, get an Excalibur crossbow. Shot a deer with a borrowed crossbow last year, <laughs> and I'm hoping to do it again this year. We haven't seen a deer yet. I haven't seen one yet, no. But today's going to change because it's the perfect weather. It's like crisp, cold, yeah. slight breeze, not too much. It's the perfect weather where deer will move in. So if you don't see them today, tomorrow morning, <laughs> we're going to be goose hunting. But are we going to be goose hunting? I think so. Yeah, we don't. We don't know yet. We'll find out today. Yeah, Mark's going to let us know if we're going back out again, or if he's going to go deer hunting as well. Because we're kind of partying, partying it up a little bit. Mark's Back of my ear gun too. Concealed oh, carry. Yeah, he's going to get a squirrel or two if he can. Five. <laughs> Add to the heap. Yep. So, all right, we'll see you after. Yep. All right. Yeah, good, good luck out there. Yep. Good luck. Well, that was a pretty uneventful, eventful night. <laughs> we, uh, well, we saw some turkeys. I wasn't really expecting to see turkeys and I wasn't prepared to shoot turkeys because whatever, turkey. I don't know, maybe I'll get my button gear. I did, uh, I tried a headshot. Well, I tried two headshots on the turkeys. Uh, I obviously missed. <laughs> and then the third one, I'm like, oh, forget it. I'm just gonna do a mid body shot, which is, you know, another kill shot on the turkey. And I hit the stupid branch. So now I got three dud broadheads. Well, they're not duddy. I picked them up and there's, there's a lot of mud on them. So mud's not usually too, too bad on a broadhead. But I'm the kind of person that like, if I shoot a broadhead once and it goes in the dirt, I'm not gonna use it again. There are ways to pull them apart and sharpen them. I just don't never trust my sharpening job on a broadhead. There's something that could lead to 
you spending an awful lot of time looking for an animal in a giant forest. I'm just kind of come up here, I want to show you something, because on my way in, I found a huge scrape. And while we're waiting for me to get up there, I want to talk to you about what I saw on the trail camera. Lots of nighttime activity, unfortunately. Completely nocturnal, which is going to make it really, really challenging to shoot a deer. Which I'm afraid is what's happening at a lot of the areas around here. It's only October 15th and they're not quite in full rut yet. So a lot of the activity is nocturnal. I mean, a lot of the activity period is nocturnal. But as we get close to the last week of October and into November, those deer started getting in rut, full rut. But uh, here's, a, here's a scrape, super, super fresh scrape I found my way in. I don't know if you can tell, but all that dirt right here in the light has all been pawed back. And then there's an overhead licking branch here in the pine, but that's fresh with the last couple of days. So what the deer do is basically they paw the earth up and then they pee in it. And then that, that's kind of a scent card, smell card for all the rest of the animals. The does will come and step in it, pee in it. And uh, then you, the deer can kind of check out what's going on. Had a little uh, buck, not sure how big, you'll see it right now on the trail camera. Uh, and the rest of the stuff, there's one little hint of daytime activity, well, most of it's at night, so. But this kind of weather here, this windy and overcast, will get them moving. And also the food that's out there, they gotta pack on that weight for the winter. Hopefully Jeremy knocks something down. He tried the corn edge today. And uh, he just did a little ground blind. He actually brought a goose with him so he could pluck it. <laughs> he likes to multitask. I told him, uh, I don't know if the feathers would help him or hinder him. Uh, maybe a deer don't mind too much if there's like goose feathers flying all over the place. A That's duck. the little goose he shot. A duck on a platter? <laughs> yeah, a little goose. <laughs> That's a pigeon? Yeah, a pigeon. Cool. So we could do a Are we eating it? Are we eating it tonight? Well, we're going to stuff it in the goose. Oh, so we're going to eat it tomorrow? Yeah. Because we're not going to eat goose tonight. No, tonight's uh, rainbow trout. Okay. And leftover raccoon bones. Okay, not even raccoons, it's a <laughs> raccoon. That's how we managed to Yeah. Do so there's a uh, heart, liver, and pigeon. Nice. And they pluck up really fast, especially compared to a goose. Yeah. And what did you see? Nothing. Not Tracks, air. signs. There's probably all the plucking you did. Uh, yeah, I got a goose plucked <laughs> while I was sitting there yeah. waiting for nothing to come out. Um, I don't know, I found some good raccoon trees though, and I had a good look around. So if we have time, we should try and call. There's like five or six likely trees within earshot of that collar. Okay. So it'd be a good setup. I know what's going on for deer. Just got to put your time in. 20 yeah. hunts, you're going to get two opportunities. Well, it's like not a great ratio, but hunts. I know that's the problem. <laughs> Uh, this oven's off you turn it through from the high heat all the way down to the low heat all the way to the oven off pilots gas on and then there's a little pilot light back here and you just have to wait for the propane to run down there you just uh crank it up and then this whole bar here is perforated with holes so the propane runs into this bar uh, burner, I guess, and heats your oven up. So I'm going to get the trout all cooked up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bunch of bear fat on the bottom just so it doesn't stick and then it'll make it nice and sizzly. And then we'll put the two trout down and put some more bear fat on the on the top of it and then we'll just sprinkle some adobo on mine. I can't put any on Jeremy's because he's not going to eat it. He's refusing to. But maybe he'll get some of the odor seeping over. And I said explicitly, if he gets any taste of the wadobo, he has to spit it out or he's cheating on his big wild deer. So obviously Kevin made his way out here. Let's see how we're doing. You guys know Kevin from the build series, not the catch and cook series, because you probably won't eat any of this. You eat a fish? Look like it. I'll try a piece. <laughs> try something. You can eat first though, because you've been waiting to eat all day. Wow. It's all about being patient. There you go. The lava. Here we got. This is the wild rice. This is the wild rice in bear fat. Hmm. 
it's not soaked in yet, but right now we need to skim. Probably. I didn't scale it, which we went over. Mm -hmm. We tried to debate whether I should actually scale it, and I didn't want to get fishy hands again. Well, on a trout, when they're small, ish, the scales are also smallish, so they're not going to bother you so much. Did you just eat the eyeball? Hmm? Oh man. <laughs> what part of it are you not going to eat? The bones and the tail. Why don't you eat the eyeball? Uh, nope. You're nope. suck them right out? Nope, not eating the eyeball. What, the cheek? No, actually the cheek's the best part. Cheek? Yeah, cod cheek is probably the best cheek. This is like a delicacy. I'm surprised you're offering the cheek. Well, good morning, everybody. Today's day four of the Wilderness Living Challenge, season number six. If you're not familiar with the challenge, the challenge is we weighed ourselves at the beginning. At the end, we're going to weigh ourselves out. We're only eating wild food. If we lose any weight at all, we lose the challenge. Have we lost any weight, yet, Jeremy? I don't know. <laughs> no, we don't know either. <laughs> we'll find out at the end. Yeah. Well, we've got a goose in the oven. No, it's not a goose. It's a goojin. That's a pigeon stuffed inside of a goose. 100% wild food uh, stuffed with apple. So it's an apple stuffed goujin, which we're going to have for brunch because we're going out turkey, or not turkey. Well, we might go turkey hunting. If there's yep. a turkey there, we'll shoot it. Yep. Um, but we're actually going goose hunting again because it was so successful yesterday. So I'll meet you out in the field, but that's not all we're doing today. We're going to go hammer probably some crows. Um, we got some, we can go fishing, go bow fishing. That might happen. Probably call try to call some raccoons again. They've been eluding us so far. We got the Fox Pro Pro Caller. Any other ideas? Uh, Crow. Pigeon. Pigeon. We can go whack some pigeons. There's a farmer down the road who wants to get, get rid of some. Maybe a sneak peek inside the oven here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see anything. Oh, wow. Fall off the bone. <laughs> That's done. <laughs> that looks so good. Roasted. Should we flip oh, it? Oh, it smells so good. Flip it and soak it. No. Just leave it like that? Yeah. Nice, nice just crust turn, on top. turn it off and just... We'll dunk it in the fat down there. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now it's not dry at all. I can't wait for supper. Brunch. Or lunch. Brunch. Brunch. Well, that's not so bad for first time cooking the oven. Especially cooking overnight. We didn't really check on it. So I had to kind of trust that it would work. But we just set it on a low, super low temperature. Probably over, slightly overcooked, but if you tear it all apart and drop it all down in that bear fat. <laughs> Mix it with some wild rice. Oh, some wild, yeah, just, we should actually chuck some wild rice in there right now and just let it soak. Some leftover fish from last night just sitting on the counter. Might as well eat it. Because we're not going to be eating for at least a few hours, maybe not till noon. Ready to go? I'm so ready. Okay, walk and loaded. We gotta walk up to the road. It's easier for us to walk out um, than to drive out. We're driving up a little bit back into the center of the property. It's about 40 acres we have access to with the homestead. Um, and then it backs onto a bunch of private land that we gained access to for all sorts of activities now. We actually gained use of another field at the back. Uh, through Mark's family That's how we got to know Mark because he's a neighbor here and uh, He's been a good uh, Friend throughout this because he's got lots of hookups um, He's also a really good goose hunter and he's interested in all the sorts of things I am except for the wild foods <laughs> He won't eat the crazy animals that we'll eat. Hey, look at that. There's a goose already. No, it's not a goose It's a decoy. So we've got a variety of different decoys here. We've got those. Uh, those are just kind of standing decoys and then we got the sleeping resting decoys mark's got well there's a science to this he's got them set up he says the biggest bigger the set the better and we got some feeders here there's a feeding decoy he's got his neck down the goal of this is to really head home uh with some surplus for jeremy he was already got seven extra birds we might eat another one if we get one if we don't manage to get anything else but this is seasonal abundance this is what's for us right now and there's a five goose limit, but I think the possession limit's pretty high. I think it's like 20 or 25 birds. So if we can send Jeremy home with a bunch of birds, that's what we're gonna do. How are our prospects this morning? Pretty good, I think. Pretty good? Yeah. If we can shoot, right. If we can shoot straight, 
We should get some birds. We should get Jeremy some food. Cool, I like right? the dropping you guys off, going home <laughs> and coming back and everything's set up and it's warmer and the yeah. sun's up. Yeah, and the, and the geese are flying. And the geese are flying. <laughs> A little bit of back cover. Yeah. Because it's pretty low visibility from the front, but like it's kind of wide open at the back here, right? Yeah. They might come in behind us, so it'll be obscured a little bit. Jeremy's just using the mullen. We used this before. This is, uh, you can make hand drill friction fire with this. And uh, I think this is just ragweed. So, cause he's, he's a little bit out in the open in this spot here. And uh, I'm tucked over here. I'll show you my spot. I, uh, I got the tree here. <clears throat> so we're just over here under this tree. And so I don't need to do a whole lot of bushing in in this spot they got the tree overhead like they're gonna cup into the wind on my left shoulder and they're gonna drop in this spot here I should be able to get them uh, I'll let them go a little bit further from this side and then they can pick them off like Jeremy would probably be in the money spot as far as when we shoot and I can pick off the back birds so that's what I'm gonna try to do Jeremy can pick off the middle and then Mark can pick off the lead so probably we'll let Mark decide when we shoot and if there's enough of them coming in we should be able to knock a few down here, Jay. Wild edible. Woo! <laughs> got raccoon poops on it. It might. I looked around. There was none there. Okay. Your duck per or goose perspective. <laughs> We're legal now, but there's nothing in the air yet. It's uh, been a nice morning though so far compared to what we have seen. On the way in, we had uh, a couple of deer out, so it would have been a good morning to be hunting deer as well. But. We haven't had much success with the deer, so we'll probably have more success with the goose. This is a really good one. Oh yeah. Thanks. Well, that was a bit of a change from yesterday. We got nothing to show for it. We're gonna give her a few more minutes and we're gonna take off. We had a couple circle by and they're mostly landing over there. Uh, Mark figures they're landing in a pond over there. So I think we're gonna probably do another goose hunt, but it won't be during this series. We'll do a, we'll do another catch and cook. Maybe uh, maybe Courtney will come out and not for the hunt, but maybe we'll do another overnighter at the cabin. Now that it's all set up, we know how to run it. We'll do another one. So my guess would be that we showed up here about a half hour after the birds actually left the ponds and went out to feed. Um, just because it was such a nice clear morning cool but it um, had no wind so I'm, I'm guessing we just missed them going out that's why there was so many just flew over us on their way back to the pond so I think we were too late but it wouldn't have mattered anyways because it wouldn't have been legal shooting like uh, I'm gonna charge up the apex battery we're gonna run off that today uh, just because it runs outside and uh, oh yeah we got to get a bite to eat uh, we had the goose sitting in here. And then we're gonna put on a pot of wild rice as well. So just got the pot here and probably use a cup of rice or so. And we get that fired up and then we'll have a bite to eat and sit down. I noticed this little red squirrel in there. Unfortunate victim of our live traps. Uh, it went into one of the raccoon sets and uh, yeah, got uh, exposure from the rain overnight because we've had some pretty nasty stuff. And that's what we're gonna go check after. We're gonna check to see if our raccoon traps are paying off. Um, so far we've gotten skunked on our traps, but hey, keep working at it. It's all we can do.
every spare minute. Get over here and pluck some more. Maybe it's good that we didn't get any this morning. <laughs> We've been using a lot of this bear fat. This is stuff I had rendered out uh, last year. So we're adding it as a calorie fortifier. Uh, it goes well with everything. Uh, we've done it with the goose, just to add a little bit more. We also have been using it on the uh, trout, the squirrel, and of course in the rice. We got our dehusked black walnuts. So we're trying to get a nice uh, hard shell on them so that we can actually break them open and eat them. This is a long-term storage project because, well, they store a long-term, first of all. Second of all, it takes a long time to get them to the point where you can actually eat them. And the squirrels know that all too well because this is exactly what the squirrels are doing. They take the outer green husk off and then they put it someplace and, and let them dry. They just can't use a fire like we can to dry them out faster. And of course, they can't leave them out in the open either because if they do, Another squirrel is going to take them. We're going to tidy up a little bit. We have some guests coming tonight. My wife and my son are expected to make the trip out here. Ready for it? Already. I don't know if I don't know if you're ready for it anymore. I think it kept cooking. Yeah. Oh, it looks it's pretty golden. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit, a little past golden. Just eat all the skin and then make my kids some sandwiches. That's really, really, really good. Skin's really, really good. Were you up all night basting it? Basting the the goose? Yeah. Nope. No, it's not just a goose. It's a goujin. That's a goujin. That's the pigeon we stuffed inside the goose, and there's apples too. Yeah. I have to fight over this guy. Just cut them in half. Cut them in half. Yeah. Okay. It's only fair. We can fight. <laughs> <laughs> trout and bird versus trout and bird. This one's really tender. Mm hmm. It's good and greasy, eh? Mm hmm. So after we eat this, we have no food. Well, aside from more geese. <laughs> and two more pigeons. Oh, squirrel. I forgot we should probably do like okay so we're good maybe we need to get the pigeons ready for tonight wadobo spice want some wadobo spice change mine yet next year next year yeah. 74 days it's a shame it's good stuff if you guys want to buy some you can now it's all for sale give me some maple syrup oh. homemade maple syrup <clears throat> smells good because we're only second jar yeah we still have we failed our maple syrup consumption. Four more jars. Three Action more jars. plan. All right, guys, we're going to go check the traps here. We got an advanced trap over here for raccoon. We had a set raccoon or coyote. We can catch anything. I got way too, too much stuff to carry. So I'm going to lug you guys around on the GoPro here. I've got two guns with me, plus all the decoys on my back for the crows. And uh, well, you can see the mess we've made with all the different animals we ate. And yet there's nothing in the trap, period. See how much water's in here. Oh, it's been piling up and piling up and piling up. Anyway, we got another trap just up the way here. Here's another trap. And it is also not touched. And all the corn is still there on the outside of it. Started this a little while ago. Keep it clear of leaves. And then when the deer come in, they'll start peeing in it. And I'll know what kind of deer around here. Got a trail camera around the corner. Let's see what's on the camera. Wow, 41, that's... What? Nobody in here since us? Brutal. There's a deer at night. Nothing, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. That looks like us. Man, nothing has been through here since we came. That was the last image, was us walking through here. Terrible. Well, reset this and keep going.
All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up in this little spot here in the corner, got an open field here. There's crows all over the place. You can't see them yet, but you will. We'll put the crow collar over here, the Fox Pro, and put the decoys over here so they're not looking at us down here. We're gonna crouch down here like military style, and then we're gonna dart out there where our decoys are at. They're gonna come in pretty fast. Okay? okay? Yeah, ready? I'm ready. Oh, I think that's it. I don't think that's working. <laughs> we did see huge flocks of them, so maybe it's that they're all together. We caught a couple singles flew through and that was it. So no luck there. We're all for everything we're trying today. That they weren't even coming in. Like we, I turned the collar off and then a couple flew in. That was it. So I'm out of ideas. That's just a, well, maybe they're coming from wherever they were. There's one way up here too. There's two more. Maybe they just were a long time coming. Well, I think they're really far away. Yeah. Like whatever the heck they're doing at that field over there. We might have, I might have called them from all the way over there. Yeah. Well, throw them out, we'll try again. We're gonna head up the field here. Uh, we'll probably hunt from the corn. Cause that's originally when I started crow hunting, I did it from here. And when I scouted, I found them up here, but I didn't have permission to hunt up there till not too long ago. You go through there? Yeah, it's a shortcut. Okay. I'm all for shortcuts. This stuff's heavy. All right, set number three. Now we're in the corn. They were landing out here before, so maybe they'll land here again. It doesn't seem very loud. Might have to turn it up. Yeah. There's none around here at all. Like, they're not, they're not right here. No. Like, we would have had some luck this morning trying it, and there was no wind. I don't know. Try something else. Maybe we'll go get some pigeons or something. That was all for nothing. We didn't get anything. Uh, sticking the crow collar wasn't working because it was really, really quiet. And then I brought it back here and I just tested it and it works fine. So uh, I think it's just all the wind and it's just not gonna shoot out sound that far. I freaking opened the door to the cabin and there's a raccoon sitting right here staring at me. And I'm like, is that thing okay? It's the middle of the freaking day. Um, so I called for Jer, um, see if he would go grab the gun while I kept an eye on it. I ran back in the cabin, I got my 22, and, uh, came out, it was still there, still staring at me, and I wanted to check to see if it was frothing at the mouth or something had some rabies, and it's looking at me, I'm like, well, if it's got rabies, it's got to go anyway, and we're looking for food, and, uh, can't have it running around here like this with the, with the, with us here and the the, uh, the pets and everything, so I freaking unloaded a whole 22 clip on the thing. <laughs> Almost. This thing is tough as nails. Oh, it's a little bit of a mess. I was not going to let up on it because I did not want it to go anywhere. I'm going to give you guys a quick look. Here it is. Did you guys see it? Oh, man, that thing's tough as nails. It must have just been so curious about all the scents that were all going on up here. Here, there, proof. It's there. See it, guys? See it? Anyway, we're going to get cleaned up. I had to get Jeremy. We were going to go over to the pond. We were kind of resolved in the fact that we were going to go get some fish out of the pond again because nothing was working. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm going to grab uh, some gloves just because I don't want to touch it without that. But uh, nothing was working today. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Sane. Jer! <laughs> I'm gonna touch it without a glove because it's just in case it's got some diseases and problems. That's insane. But as I was saying, just from having all the dead refuse here, like we got a turkey tail there, we got geese hanging up all over the place. <sighs> Do you hear all the shots? <laughs> Wasn't quite 15. Like 16? Guess what it was? Uh, raccoon. Yeah? Was it? Yeah. Here, come in the frame. Seriously, I, I I'm not joking. I'm not making this up. I opened the door 
and it's freaking right here. Oh, right there. And I'm like, yeah, because I was going to oh. keep an eye on it to see if it run, yeah, if it yeah. ran. So I, I went and grabbed the gun and it was still there. I'm like, well, I'm, if either it's got a disease and I'm going to shoot it and we're going to throw it away yeah. or we're going to shoot it and eat it. Yeah. So anyway, it was tough as nails, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I heard a few shots. Well, I didn't, wasn't going to let, let, let up on it. So where did it end up? It's just over here. Oh, okay. It's a little bit of a mess. I want to get the gloves just in case oh, it's okay. got yeah, yeah. a problem. But I think you've got worms. Yeah. <laughs> so like I was telling everybody, we were going to go, we were res resigned to go get some, some, fish. some fish out of the pond. So Jeremy's up digging worms yeah. out of the field. That's funny. You did all right there? Yeah, we flipped some logs and uh, okay. my brother and I, and then uh, there's a bunch. Well, that works. Yeah. More than well, enough. okay, so let's we'll get the raccoon hung up. Yeah. Um, we can still go fishing. Yeah. Because we're not going to clean then the shoot raccoon. Pigeons and, no. We, yeah, we'll grab enough. Yeah, we can grab some pigeons too. How crazy is that? That's funny. It must have smelled all the all junk food. we have all over the place. Yeah. Probably followed us all the way back. From <laughs> I heard the crows calling and it was like, oh, there must be food over there. What the hell, man? That's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Right In on the, the middle porch. of the day like this? Yeah. I had no time to grab a camera there. <laughs> That's one of those opportunities you don't wait for. <laughs> well, if there's a raccoon at camp, it's it's not gonna stick around once it knows what's up. And yeah. it looked like it couldn't see me too good. They don't have very good day, daytime vision. It was just kind of like, what? Uh, wrong spot. <laughs> and like, uh, where do I go? Well, cause I wanna go this way. Oh, that's a rush. <laughs> Wouldn't be so much of a rush if I wasn't you know, interested in eating it. And that's pretty much why we came back. Hungry, tired thirsty now i'm all pumped, pumped up full of energy that's a pretty fat raccoon a female too so it's gonna probably be heavier even i don't know what you're doing out there in the middle of the day but i wonder how they domesticated wolves well it's the wolves that wandered into camp that made friends with the people i don't think i'd make friends with a raccoon but hey you never know some people have. So this is our homestead trout pond. We're not really that all that far from the cabin. It's on another property, so we've got this dug out. Uh, it was a last resort kind of thing. There are places to fish around here, but they're not really good. And that's basically why we put this trout pond in. And, you know, we could spend all day, maybe catch all fish somewhere. But then it would be an all day project. So this is the homesteading part of it. Next year, you guys think we should plant gardens and things like that? And we could have pumpkins and zucchinis and squashes and maybe even some corn. I think that would be a cool series to do from the cabin. But we'd have to get it started, obviously, in the spring, get everything planted so that we had crops to grab. Jeremy went up to the barn there, tried to get a pigeon. He missed, what are you, 0 for 3 or 0 for 2? 0 for 2. 0 for 2. So he didn't manage to get one. But we'll go back up to the barn and have another peek. We'll settle back down, they should, anyway. Jeremy's got strict instructions to catch two big trout, not a little trout, and a big trout. So if his first fish that he catches is a little trout, then I'm going to catch the second one, which is going to be a big trout. Bring him up over here. Right over there. If you want. Trout. Yeah, they're real slippery. They got lots of power, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Don't let go of them. Well. Hold them tight because they still got lots of life left. There you go. Nice one. Yeah. Any progress? Yeah. Give me a second. There's a nice school of them over at the other end. Oh, that's a good one. I saw his white belly. There we go. Oh, that's going to be a good supper. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that fat one. That's a good size one. Yeah, there's a couple torpedoes like that cruising the other end. Is there? Yeah. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Like, like, like big ones? 25, 30 fish over there. Oh, well, that's good. And some of them are that big or bigger. Awesome. Yeah. Here we go, guys. There's fish number two. And I get to eat the big one. Because <laughs> I caught the big one. Uh, Jeremy's trying to get himself a pigeon. We're trying to get us pigeons. More pigeons. 
Not having much luck with that air gun. He's 0 for 3 now on the air gun. Don't think I can hit one flying, but you never know. I'm going to get set for the deer hunt now. This time, as you know, well, last episode, I actually had turkeys coming in and I missed them three times. I was doing headshots and I missed them. So I'm going to bring my gun this time. So if they go past my stand again, I'm going to blast them with a gun because it's open. It's open season. I can take a, I can take a male or a female. Oh, I'm going to get suited up and I'll meet you over at the tree stand. Same place as last yesterday. Hopefully different experience. Maybe I'll see a deer and a turkey. Wouldn't that be sweet? We got you two nice new chairs. Well, they're not new, new to the cabin. You heard that Jeremy didn't like what he was sitting on before? I did not hear that, but I gathered these would be nicer than what you had. They're pretty sturdy. Where'd you find them? Side of the road. Caramel sauce? Yeah, right. Bear caramel. Mm-hmm. Look how big mine is, it doesn't even fit. Yeah. Let's get upside down. Jeremy's gonna get nothing in his, and I'm gonna put put over. We go check out the meat pole to the right. To the right. Mm. Oh my god! What do you think of the meat pole? Is that what is that? Go on over. Go look. Oh my god! Where's all the? Why is there so many feathers? Oh my. God. Okay, that's why. Ra or, uh, raccoon, goose, 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 goose. Pigeon? <laughs> yeah. How, where the heck did you get a pigeon? Well, uh, from the barn. Uh, chipmunk? It's a red squirrel. It got, it went into the live trap and died because it rained a lot. Oh. So. They look so weird without feathers. Don't they? It's just creepy. They look did like you think chickens. A, do you think a goose was that big? Mm. Like a live goose? They look so small. Well, with the, the feathers, feathers off, but what about with the feathers on? They look pretty big. Yeah, don't they? they look huge. But like, if you just cut off the neck, it, it looks like it it'll if you if you took off the neck and those feet, and it look like like you could sell it as a chicken. Yeah, for sure. It looks like a chicken. You could feel like pillows. Yeah, you want to make a pillow? I wouldn't. Yeah. Ask ask go inside. Ask Jeremy for the pillow he made. He made a pillow. Oh, he did? Yeah. I was going to feel a story of the pillow he made. How many geese are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did you eat one? Yep, we ate one. There's one Eight. inside you can eat if you want. Oh, it's so fluffy. Don't squeeze it too hard or all the feathers will pop out again. So that's the, the, the uh, breast underneath the goose on the outside it's part. It's really soft. <laughs> Mom, feel it. Oh yeah. Who's down? Mm -hmm. Very nice. It's very you soft. You can press it back. Do you want to put it back up? Yeah. <laughs> All right, the kids are gone. So we don't have to share. rub it in. Oh, sure, that's, yeah. <laughs> We're eating pretty good today, but we have been eating pretty good. I'd say so. 
right? Yeah. Every night I'm hearing the coyotes. Yeah. <clears throat> I heard coyotes from the stand uh, where I was sitting to, sounding off like big, big group of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, pretty neat. I haven't seen one here yet. I walked up on one. I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, but I was going to the stand. I actually was going through like well grass like this, and it's there's a trail off of a fence row. Mm -hmm. And it kind of came over the hill, and this just white patch of fur just went like that. It was a, like a big coyote. Mm -hmm. I was only about 10 yards away, but, <clears throat> but it saw me. It knew I was there first, and I just saw it run. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's kind of neat. Well, we'll see what tomorrow brings. We don't know yet. Good morning, everybody. It's day five of the Wilderness Living Challenge, season number six. If you've been following along, you know exactly what's happening. We're trying to live off wild food in a homesteading edition of the Wilderness Living Challenge. Just catching up on breakfast here. Got some leftover rice and trout from yesterday. Topped up with some maple syrup and some adobo spice. Jeremy's chomping on a goose leg. I'm all camoed out. Jeremy's about to get camoed out. We're gonna split up this morning. Uh, Jeremy's gonna go to a spot for deer and turkey, and so am I. Just different places. Yeah. So we'll see if our luck changes on the deer front. We're hoping for something big. Nothing seen. There's a, I had a grouse come right below me on the stump down here and he was drumming and then when it looked real quick he saw me. But that was it. Squirrels, crows, no turkeys, no deer. So I'll head back to the cabin and we'll process up that raccoon that was unfortunately too close to the cabin and I was too ready for it. So I'll see you back over there. We'll find out how Jeremy's hunt went this morning. He hunted the squirrel stand and he might have caught some deer coming off the field. Once all those other fields get taken down. The corn, there's a cornfield over here, which I, I think the deer are hiding in. The cornfields ruin everything here until they're taken down, and then the deer have to stay in the woods. Until then, they just stay in the corn all day long. But where Jeremy's hunting, they're taking the corn down too. So I'm just gonna go for a little walk. I said to do a little bit of exploring on a morning hunt because then I can see if there's any sign here looking for some fresh tracks there's a couple of spots the deer like to go in through this little corner here so where my stand is sometimes you can't see them there's a couple little trails here there's some deer tracks in here so they're here not a ton of tracks yeah, there's a couple more here. Anyway, I'll go a little, a little explore and see what I see. Here's a funny little scrape, only because, well, the licking branch is farther over here, but there's a really pronounced deer trail coming through here. And that's a big track. Big, big track here. And then uh, another big track here. And that deer's been standing here a lot and kicking the dirt up here, making that scrape. But it's coming from the cornfield over here and then winding through. 
have a tree stand over here but it overlooks the grassy area but they're not going through the grassy area they're just going from the corn here and then they're going back toward over here where my stand is over on the other side it looks like jeremy's busy uh, working on some walnuts i got a squirrel here at the cabin on the when i got back yeah and what color a black one in a, i shot him in a stump into a stump in a stump <laughs> there's a whole story i'll have to go to my video and uh get uh get the deets on that well that's a rip yeah yeah you gotta watch a one wildcrafter video i saw a coyote this morning did you shoot it no passed behind me in the stand at a trot and i uh, just kind of turned over looked over my shoulder in time to see his big fluffy tail go by and i heard a bunch of turkeys there was a gobbler gobbling and a bunch of hens answering and i tried to call those guys in with my very best turkey impression um, but uh, no dice so we've got a bunch of raccoon traps which have not been producing they're producing just as well as all our deer stands are so i'm thinking that raccoons and the deer are hanging out in the same place so i put together a little treat for them there's uh, leftover bits of apple bone bits uh, the fish uh, fillet parts, the rib cage that we took out from yesterday. That's all good stuff. But uh, it's amazing how much food we've managed to put out here and not have any interest from anything. But this is almost, well, it's a season of abundance for here uh, with all the crops that are getting pulled off. The animals here are making use of it while they can. They're fattening up on the corn and the soybeans before it gets all tilled under and then they have to rely on well whatever they can find i'm going to show off our advanced trap show how much food is going into this thing it's it's amazing literally amazing how much stuff we have in there you see all the feathers we've got squirrel tails we've got guts so anybody who's mentioned that we should use bait or we should use our refuse for bait to trap animals <laughs> that's not even guaranteed so i'm going to throw another bunch of food in there and probably going to continue to leave this trap here until it gets set off i'm going to take a quick peek to find out if there's even any animals coming through here if they're all just on the fields little mouse going inside the trap of course you can't trigger it because it's uh doesn't have a foot pan it's triggered by those little wires well at least somebody's getting fat off of us yeah a little mouse every time 93 triggers of a mouse <laughs> there you go i forgot to take the crop out of this one so i'm gonna crop it crop it it's like a never-ending job yep are you glad we didn't get more goose yet nope i would <laughs> be happy with more geese yeah yeah, I would have just taken a break from one of the goot from one of the deer hunts and done more plucking. We're just gonna get on cleaning that raccoon. Uh, it's got a kind of a dirty butthole. So I asked Jeremy what he wanted to do it. He said he's right on it. So Jeremy's gonna clean around the butthole and then we're gonna string her up and we're gonna turn this raccoon into burger. These things happen. Wrong place, wrong time. So we just want ringing around and trying to free it up so that we can tie it off. Yeah without getting any of the poop on the meat. That's the plan. I'm just trying to remove all the fur that has any poop or anything on it. That's to be done pretty carefully. And you ask for a piece of rope? Yeah, just to tie it off after. And then uh, we'll be able to pull it through. Okay. Pretty good. Black squirrel. Quick, quick, he's going. He's gonna cross the path in uh, 10 yards. See him? He hasn't come out yet, he's trapped it. There he goes, he's up, 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 up. On the hill, oh, yeah. on the trail now. That didn't take you very long. <laughs> camera off, camera on. Boom, oh, done. How does that look? Delicious? It's amazing how greasy these guys get when they warm up. So that's a big job done. Uh, it's uh, On camera it took, uh, what, like a minute or two? In real life it took an hour, uh, probably over an hour. And a lot of the 
the urine it had a full bladder had the fullest bladder i've ever seen in my entire life on an animal like take a piss would you like, what are you carrying all that anyway it, it it was and it was it was not good smelling so i ended up trimming like a ton of the fat off threw that down by the advanced trap uh jeremy's got a, obviously a ton of a ton of work left to do he's got uh, one two three four done three left to go and he's still got a couple squirrels to go as well he's making a pillow i guess i showed you guys the other day were you collecting some buck feathers for the pillow yeah Might so well. got nice down yeah so that's the down underneath oh it is soft super soft yeah so underneath uh if i could show you on this one there's like a rough uh feather and then below that is the down so if you buy yourself a goose down jacket that's what you're getting supposedly sometimes they fake it right well it's not wild goose <laughs> no it's domestic goose you're getting like the white geese from the farm yeah we got a squeaky door you guys hear that all right so now we need to figure out what we're going to do uh we've got a kind of a gap in the middle of the day here uh where the deer aren't moving and the turkeys aren't really moving so um we ha i made some wild rice kind of while i was waiting so that's ready to go. Um, I, th I mean, in a perfect world, we'd be sitting down and eating raccoon burger, but there's nobody back at camp to do processing for us. But we do have leftover geese. So I think, or a leftover goose, I should say, from a couple days ago. So we'll sit down and pick at that. It's kind of, all right, we're digging in and we're thinking, 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 thinking. I'm thinking you guys should buy some adobo spice mm. <laughs> to keep these projects going. Stock up now for the apocalypse. Yeah, because if you got to eat all this nasty stuff, you're going to have to put some spice on it. All right. Well, I think we made up our mind. I'm going to plow through this and we'll see you over in the goose field. Yep. Crow field. The crow goose field. <laughs> oh, the crow field. Squirrels are moving so much now, and Jeremy and I are in the habit of bringing our weapons with us because you never know. There's been black squirrels running up and down here all day long. We had a bait station set up with black walnuts, and we would just leave it off. And then, but they weren't they weren't going into it. The red squirrels maybe got into it a little bit, and then that was it. Anyway, I'm gonna go do some business. I'm gonna keep my eye out for a squirrel. You sit quietly in the woods. You never know. This is this is a trick that people used to use a long, long time ago. They would always have their gun with them because you just never know. And collecting food was something that you did while you were busy doing something else. Well, I feel a whole lot lighter, but no squirrel. We can't send Jeremy home without getting a crow. Yep. So we're set, we're almost set. No, we're not set yet. I'm waiting this crow out in the tree, not talking to us. Thankfully, they got Mojo. Mojo has wings, which are they're kind of magnetized. They just sit on there. They're just little cardboard pieces. Looks on, and then it uh, it'll go two minutes or two seconds, not two minutes, two seconds on, and then it'll take a break, and then it'll go again. The Mojo's on, and then get the uh, Fox Pro. Got the collar here. So you remember what the game plan is? Yep. What's the game plan? Wait till they get close enough and then shoot one. <laughs> shoot one. If you think you have a shot, take it. Okay. That's the plan. I think get the camera on the tripod here. Do you have any extra ammo? Yeah, I got two. Okay. Ready? So ready. Okay, don't move. Competing with another party. I think they know what's going on already, still. Like, I wonder if they just, because I've already done here, they know still. Like, I have crow fight, crow duet, ugly crow, young crow, dying crow. Try to fight. Take one if you can here, Joe. As soon as I put that crow fight on, they were on it like snot. We're gonna try another spot. 
I'll go down to the pond and I'll try there. So this might look like a wild grape bush or shrub. It's actually a vine. So the vine's just kind of taken over this other poor tree at the bottom and pretty much killed it. Uh, you can see these vines growing up 40 feet in up a, a tree. It's hard to get the grapes, but the birds don't have any problems with them. Uh, so Jeremy's just going to pick the clusters off. So they come off just like you would uh, store or domesticated uh, grape, except they're very much smaller and they have uh, sometimes two pits in them. So Jeremy's going to have a bunch to bring home. We'll have maybe a few for snack. This will go good with a, as a jelly or a juice. If you do decide to juice it, um, cook it all up, mix it all up, strain it, and then let it sit. And at the bottom, there'll be a crystallized massive junk. Throw that out or don't drink it because it might uh, irritate your throat. That's a good load. Yeah, do something with that for sure. Second set here. This is our what third or fourth set we've tried for crow. Yeah. Uh, last 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 time was Jeremy's fault because she shot twice and missed twice. I only <laughs> shot once <laughs> and missed once. <laughs> so we just gotta cover up faces and fire up the collar. Well, I think Jeremy missed. I did give him the best spot though, because the sun's right in my eyes. I couldn't even look up to see if there's any crows in nearby. What happened? Missed. You missed? Yeah. How close was it? Close enough to hit, I thought. Really? And you missed it? Well, because they, they came by like three times, right? But they wouldn't come in low. So that last call, was it like a distress call? Dying crow. Dying crow. So the one came in and he was a little more committed, but he was still pretty high up. And I thought, they're not going to get any closer than that. Guys, we're back in the tree stand. We only got two more tries tonight and tomorrow morning. And then that's it for the Wilderness Living Challenge, season number six. I'm at my sort of not really favorite place to sit, but I normally see deer here fairly regularly. It's a cut soybean field. The reason I don't like sitting here is because it's freaking pouring. I basically have to sit here until the sun drops before I have any hope of a deer coming out in this field. It's freshly cut. There's lots of beans out there still for them to eat. And there's lots of tracks out here. And behind me is a bedding area for the deer. So. If they decide they're going to come to this field, they're going to come from behind me and then they're going to work their way out in this field. I really hope we get something big. That would be a great way to finish off this challenge, but there's nothing guaranteed. Oh well, guys, we're back at the cabin. Let's see uh, what Jeremy's up to. I'm surprised I was able to get out of the tree without actually spooking any of those deer. So I might be able to hunt back there again another time. Um, yeah, those deer didn't want to come my way at all. There was, I think, two mature does and two uh, fawns, uh, one a piece, I think. But I couldn't really see through the brush. You probably had a better view because you were down lower than me and they went the wrong way. I did kill multiple deer from that little spot where they came out from. There's just not any trees that are any good to put up a tree stand, but that might have to be a project for another day. I might have to go look down there and move a stand. Although now, with the soybean cut, there's not really much reason for them to go through, especially if it gets tilled and replanted. 
Um, and there was a pile of crows out there. There was like 200 or 300 crows in oh, the yeah. field. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how'd you go, Jeremy? Pretty quiet at my end. Yeah. Yeah. I got two squirrels. Um, it's kind of the same situation as last time. They were at that 30 yard mark under the hemlock. Yeah. And then I got them both or two together. Yeah. So that was good. Yeah. So we got to get that coon on the go. Oh, look at look what's coming. Ask and you shall receive. It's the uh, special guest. <laughs> the fin? Your no. guest. Too many guns in here. Too many guns. We we'll have to sell some. It's a special guest. It actually looks bigger now than it did before. So we're going to show you how to make this raccoon into burger. Are we going to make patties? If I was eating buns, I would say let's make patties. Yeah. Meatballs? Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't, we, we need to cook it all the way through. We had, you're right, if we had buns. Yeah, then we would. That's what we did before, right? We made actual burgers. Burgers, yeah, and they were good. Yeah, this one we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, because this is we'll do this living challenge. Style. <laughs> we're gonna get one person on the grinder, one person on the deboning, and uh, we got a dish here. So we drop it into the pan here, and it should be ready to go. And hopefully, there's enough to have a good fill. ground pork. Taste the ground pork? Yeah. It should. We're gonna do a poor man's clean on this one. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. No. Like cooking, like I knew it was gonna be, like we've had raccoon before. <laughs> um, even earlier in this challenge, it was just that other one was a younger raccoon. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think ideally you probably want to target younger raccoons. Hello. Look who's here. You have to go. You have to go right there to be in the frame. Want see? Good day. I was just gonna sign off. <laughs> I got my spoon right here. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got chunks on it. Uh, cover it up though. Might as well. With the chunky spoon. Sure. It's chunks on it. Wow. It's as clean as you got. <laughs> you use your fingers if you want. Tastes like hamburger. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Because that passes the test. Yep. The unbiased. Come on, right there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 when Bean, the dog, won't eat it, and she'll eat anything. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. That'll be the last day, and we'll yeah. get out. Find out if we lost any weight. Yeah. Well, good morning guys. Welcome to day six of the Wilderness Living Challenge. This is season six. It was a decent morning, um, you know, foggy, but beautiful. I didn't hear anything, not too much going on. It was my last shot at getting a deer during this season, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna keep hunting out of the cabin until I get my deer. No, until the season runs out or I get my deer, whichever comes first. Uh, I just checked inside the cabin and nobody's home jeremy is still out he said he was gonna do a little bit of a turkey hunt after his deer hunt so i think what i'll do is check the trail cameras to see if there's any activity and then we'll also check those live traps to see if uh, anything's come through uh deer wise here we've got a meat pole going on we've got one squirrel two three uh, four squirrels on the ground. We got one, two, three, four, five, six geese. Oh, look, and the new guest, a raccoon. So that means Jeremy's already been back and he must have either shot one this morning or found one in the live traps. We have uh, five live traps out here. I'm just gonna go down right now and uh, I wanna check the advanced trap. That's the big, big trap we have. And we've been filling it full of all kinds of things. It looks like there's a deer scrape here. Look right down here. And that, we're not really far from the cabin here. 
the licking branch up above, deer scrape below. That's pretty cool. On the way back, I'll take a leak in it um, and I'll leave my scent there. And well, see the deer don't really know who is peeing where or what human pee smells like. They just think it's pee so that they pee in it and it keeps the scrape going. Here's our big advanced trap here. And it's empty. You see a trap in, trap over here. We've got a peanut butter with marshmallow top and we've got all of our remains from so many different animals. Chunk up a whole bunch of apples, as many as I can, until I get tired of it. Tell you what, coming back to a warm meal is something that every hunter enjoys. So we're gonna try to make that a possibility here. We won't add the maple syrup until later because it will tend to burn. Looking pretty good. We added those acorns. Now we're just trying to soften it up. I've got a whole jar here of bear fat and I've, I've had this for a year so it's pretty much time to use it. Calorie rich here for our way out and then whatever we can't eat I'll send back with Jeremy because he's going to continue with his big wild year. His big wild year entails only eating wild food for an entire year. Well Jeremy's not back yet. And I'm starving, so I'm going to eat. Oh, feels pretty good to get out of my gear. You got some uh, cobbler all set to go, man. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you've got some cobbler, but I haven't got a gobbler for you. No? No. Nothing happened? Nothing. Really? No. Uh, might have had a hen come in super close, answering calls, but it might have also been a squirrel bark. Well, I'm going to crack one open now and want to see uh, see how they taste and, get, and describe to you guys how they taste. So let's take it outside here and we'll smash it with the ax. <laughs> well, there's a couple pieces there. I wasn't expecting it to blow up. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Well, here we go. For all our troubles, we got a couple pieces. I kind of over smashed that, but hey, it worked. Just like I remember them tasting. Turpentine-ish? Turpentine-ish, yeah, Jerry's got it right. It's kind of like a paint. What I want to do is find the base of the tail and then make a cut down along the base of the tail so you can see the tailbone there. And then with a sharp knife tip, as best you can, cut along, along the tailbone there. If you can split the skin a bit. Now, if you get the skin free from the meat, what it wants to do is it wants to peel backwards. Um, and then you're gonna end up with a tear. So what I do is grab the, grab the, the skin really firmly and then hold it by the hindquarters and push, push the skin without uh, letting it fold back on itself as much. There you go. Mm, like magic. Yeah. So it holds on really hard at the top part. Okay. That's the trickier part. All right. That's a nice, nice uh, black one. As far as black ones go. Yeah. <laughs> the gray ones are a lot nicer. Yeah, they're really nice. You didn't get any grays, did you? One. 
one gray. Yeah. So this will be the first little bit of decoration for the cabin. I also have some hairs I'll put in as well, like cottontail hairs that I had tanned. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just keep adding to it. So uh, Jeremy said, just put a little bit of tanning solution or salt, I guess, in a pinch. Ha, ah, get it? And <laughs> that was a bad one, right? <laughs> and then uh, you're good to go. So this is the gr the black ones are not nearly as nice as the gray ones. So we're gonna have to get a gray one. We'll have to get a whole bunch of them. How about that? So here's all the surplus that we have left over that Jeremy's got to go home with. He's got two five gallon pails of apples. He's got a five gallon pail of black walnuts. He's got a pail of grapes. He's got five squirrels, two pigeons, and some coon fat. He's also got six geese. I almost forgot, he's also got a raccoon. So he collected some oyster mushrooms and we're gonna combine that with uh, some bear fat and the wild goose we had. We're gonna have a nice meal uh, right after we weigh out. After all that work, we get to have a bite of the goose. Mmm, fresh gooses. And it's been out for about five days. Uh, we'll talk more about prepping them that way uh, in another video. We're gonna go on another goose hunt, but in case you're wondering, they haven't spoiled. But I do wanna show you the process that we've been talking about here to age these so that they're a lot better to eat. Mm, it's really good, not overdone, nothing. I'm just gonna go inside and grab a mushroom. Yeah, me too. I'm gonna sneak a couple mushrooms here. Yeah. All right, got some mushrooms here. It was very fatty with all the goose, with all the goose cracklings. Um, very nutty flavor. It's really good though. All right, you're filling up? Yeah, keep, one more ounce. Keep going. All right. Keep going, one more pound. No, I'm good. Okay, so you start off at what, 164? Yep. Okay, 164. If you lose any weight whatsoever, you lose a challenge. What? What if your battery died? It didn't. You just have to step on it. Same as every other year. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There you go. 164. 161.0. Damn. Three pounds down. You lost three more pounds? Terrible. These challenges are killing me. They are killing you. It's probably. All right. I don't know. Fun? All right. I hate enough. I feel like I lost weight too. Yeah. I was 142.8. Yeah. 142.8. So we'll, let's say 143 for easy math. Okay. So 143. 141.8. Oh, 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 no, oh, 142. 142. So a pound and pound two. Is that right? Uh, One, from 142.8 to 142.0. So you're 0.8 pounds. 0.8. 0.8. You're right. Yeah. Because, yeah, but not. You lose. <laughs> not as bad as you did. You lost no. three. Yeah. So figure that one out. We're able to capitalize on birds and mammals. Yeah. Where in season one, it was our only options were fish. Yeah. Uh, and maybe a nuisance beaver, but that was like our trial for the second season. The second season were a lot better. Yep. A lot better. Yeah. Look at how spotless this cabin is. All cleaned up, spick and span, everything out. Did a good uh, sweep up and uh, mop. I don't want to leave any food because I don't want to attract any mice. Yeah, all cleaned up. Jeremy's going to take that cobbler to go, but uh, that's a wrap. That's it. We're out.